All right, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hotfix. I'm your host, Dysis, and we're going to be having a pretty jam-packed day today. Uh, as you all know, uh, there's a pretty big release in the horror community. Uh, I argue one of the biggest releases of all time in terms of the game. Uh, before we get to that, though, I do just want to say that uh, SGDQ 2023 is coming up from May 28th to June 4th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're interested at all in attending the event, registration is now open until May 3rd. You can go to gamesandquick.com for more information. All right, anyway, I'll stop beating on the bush. RE4 Make come, came out. Uh, everyone's been asking, where is RE4 Make? Here is RE4 Make. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the differences of the original game and the remake today. Uh, both games will be the pro category, so you kind of get to see Resident Evil 4 at its most difficult and probably the most thorough. Uh, it's going to be a pretty fun day of runs, and honestly, I'm kind of excited just to get started. Anyway, to kick things off, we're going to be going to Resident Evil 4 Classic... Professional with Pharaoh. Take it away. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Pharaoh, and I'm going to run New Game Professional today. So, timer in three, two, one, go. Resident Evil 4. As we got on commentary, Mike Wave and JTB. Hello, hey, everyone. Man. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. my name is Mike. I've been running this game for a long time. I haven't run it in a little bit, but I did run this game back in AGDQ 2020, I think. And I'm JTB. I ran this game twice at GDQ. I don't know. It feels it, like it's it been was, eight it, years it, since I've even booted this Yeah, up. it was twice. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've, I've been around the community for a while, uh, probably as long as Vero here. Yeah, we started the around at the same time. You know, the dog save, man, it's already won one bonus to this run over a uh, remake. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do it. So if we like want to start talking like mechanics about like uh, what Pharaoh is doing, uh, he already pulled out a grenade that he got off a crow that he got like really fast from that uh, crow over on the sign. Uh, in this game, uh, I don't know. If, I don't think this is a thing in the remake, but uh, in this game, you run. I think is it like four or five percent faster with like a grenade or like an egg or a rocket launcher? Yeah, around uh, like four point six percent, I believe. Yeah, it's like very slightly faster uh, with the grenade. Uh, so he's running long enough here that it is worth like going into his menu really fast to equip that. And right here for the village, he's going to start off by killing this one enemy right here. Uh, so the way the village works is similar in both games. Uh, you just need to kill 15 enemies for the game to progress right here. So uh, he's going to oh, be running this little. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> I can practice that before stream. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But so, yeah, if you want to explain it, I was about to say that's a really nice kind of benefit of a professional mode in this this game is being able to just like quickly reset these uh these, those rooms because that 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 grenade could be a little bit tricky if you're not like into there we go. It. Yeah, but yeah, you're throwing it out there to get like that. Uh, all those enemies that are grouped up spawns the second wave, and the Pharaoh's gonna be going out here and killing the rest of them to trigger the the bingo cutscene. Yeah. Ooh, they're kind of spread apart right now. Oh, the lady survived. Does it still work? If not, they should take it out. I think. Yeah, there oh, we go. Oh, all right. That was all right. That I guess that was like a long death animation. Yeah, wow. that was a bit unfortunate. The yeah. marathon luck. Yeah, unfortunate, but it does happen. Uh, we'll still be fine though with just one like a uh, less shotgun shell right there. Shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Pharaoh's also going to stop right here to get this, this, uh, is it, yeah, it's a pendant. I, I forgot what the treasure is called. I just know what it is at this point. Uh, but yeah, the treasures sell for 10k each that we're going to be picking up so we can get a rocket launcher as fast as possible. Then we get to our first uh, merchant spot. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be running ahead to our first mashing QT. Are you using a turbo? I am this using or turbo. No? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do allow in the rule set uh, currently for people to use a, a macro or turbo for these matching QTEs because they are really, really jank at 60 FPS, which is what we're playing on the uh, Steam version. The matching QTEs just are very notorious on the Steam version. They just like 
the game just expects you to match like way faster than you were actually supposed to. So we just allow people to use macro. So like, it's just less of an issue, basically. Wasn't there like a very tight like clip you can do there if you like do the QT at the very last second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, tree skip. Saves about a second, uh, but I think Fira was playing it safe right there. Yeah, save a second or die. That's your option. <laughs> yeah. Easy chapter one, no resets. Yeah, definitely no resets. Gonna be hooking up some rifle ammo right here. And uh, we're running into a canyon. This is another pretty, uh, if you're running this game a lot, this is another big like reset point along with the village, uh, just because the enemies can do some funny stuff here sometimes. And the movement's also pretty precise with like all the enemies are like in a set path for this room as soon as you spawn in. So you kind of just need to be moving as fast as possible, basically, as soon as you get in. Now we gotta yeah, hope we saw, don't get uh, our good front okay. bill here. Oh yeah, oh, all right, he's not there, nice. Yeah, there's an enemy that can sometimes be in your way there uh, as you're going to the second pendant right there. He can just troll you. There's not really a whole lot you could do if he decides to, to be funny, you know? And all this kind of demonstrates like a big part of uh, the Resident Evil 4 run in general. It's just these these areas where you're like kind of like circling back a bit into groups of enemies. So you gotta have like really precise movement if you want to manipulate them to go certain ways or hit certain like windows of being able to pass them before they you know get to a tight spot. So you don't really see that too much until you start running the game and you're like, okay, why is this guy here but he's not on you know this other run? That yeah, I'm watching. So there's a lot of really cool, just like intricate things to the run that you don't really notice that, um, until you really get into the thick of it. Yeah, and uh, you don't quite notice it right now, but Pharaoh did do him a nip uh, as he entered the first door, or no, the second door in this room, so that uh, the first enemy pointed at him, and it kind of manipulates how the enemies here behave. It just makes it a lot easier to get through the room. It's like, I think you have to, like, you have to basically interact with the door at, like, a very specific angle, and it'll just make the enemies behave the way you want them to. There's a lot of these, like, very little, like, small, like, minor manips that you could do just to make getting through a room like a little bit faster that you're going to be like seeing Pharaoh do throughout the run. Yeah, it was pretty clean. 1-2 though. Yeah. Going to be getting to the end right here. Sure better than 1-1. Don't read. All right, nice. We, we are illiterate right here. Uh, it is very <laughs> easy to to read a book off that shelf and the game just completely stops when you do. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a lot more uh, common than you might think for runners to do that. And we gotta hope the guy stays on the left. He does. Yeah. N nice, nice, nice. So yeah, this is another room where uh, there's like three different patterns you can get with that group right there. And uh, we do have a way of dealing with each pattern, thankfully, uh, especially if, like your movement, like your lines are just good enough. Uh, but yeah, th that guy staying to the left is most optimal since then you don't have to stop at all. Like you just keep moving. But yeah, as you're going to see, Pharaoh is just doing a lot of these like really precise lines that like once you have enough like hours in this game, you you just have all these lines like memorized at this point to get through each room. Uh, this game has been just optimized and labbed to death at this point. We just know exactly what line to do for each room. It's kind of like that for all the older RE games. Got it. What are you selling? Yeah, first merchant menu right here. We're selling those treasures we picked up so we can get that rocket launcher we were talking about earlier. You heading out right here. Yeah, money is very specific too, too throughout this run. We have to buy a number of rocket launchers and then we do a few different like equipment swaps throughout the the entirety of the run. So knowing like you know, this this is the exact treasures we want to pick up as opposed to like banking on you know random uh, money drops is uh yeah. is very important because you don't want to get to like a certain part where you need the rocket launcher later on in the game and you just don't have the money for it. It turns to a very awkward situation. There is a point late into the game where uh, I'm guessing Pharaoh is just going to be going for a lot of random money drops because uh, there's uh, if you get enough money drops, you can afford to get a uh, you can afford to get a rocket launcher like earlier than you normally can, and it saves a little bit of time. Yeah, I'm gonna get a couple random drops, hopefully. Yeah, but even if I don't, it's not really a problem. Like there are backups. 
Yeah, I'm gonna be stopping here to shoot his crow, get the flash. That one specific crow drops a flash, like all the other crows just drop like a tiny little bit of money. It's like a really, really small amount of money. So we just want that flash. Uh, we should just mention right now, all the grenades in this game, like all the different variants of grenades in this game are like extremely OP. Like flashes, like like regular grenades, incendiaries, they're all like insane. They're all super, super useful for the run. Yeah, and you might see like, you know, at the very start where um, Pharaoh had to reset after missing that one grenade. That's something that continues on through the rest of the run. You know, you miss a grenade on a very vital part, you know, most of the time it's just better just to reset the room and try to get it correct instead of you know, doing an alternative strat. Yeah. And uh, you saw right here, uh, Pharaoh actually did another small manip right there, so that guy would point at him instead of running at him to try and go for a grab. Uh, the one consistent thing between this game and uh, 4R is that, like, grabbers are just your worst nightmare, basically. I, you know, honestly, I forgot about all these manips, but as you're saying them, like, oh, yeah, I remember the door in one, two. And then I remember, <laughs> you know, shooting, shooting the, the wires right there at a specific point to get the guy to point, like... <laughs> Yeah, and we should mention right now we are getting to the first like really big uh, RNG checkpoint of the game, which is uh, our our buddy Del Lago. Sh streamer, you can shoot the leak. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> if you shoot the leak five times, you get a special treasure. Dude, it was funnier like when the game originally like when it came out, like everyone tried doing that for remake. It's like. Oh. <laughs> That's actually just a little bit cringe. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice throw there. Th this fight on 60 is actually really, really difficult. Like, it's like, this is like one of the big things you will have trouble with uh, as you are learning the run. Uh, this, like, this fight, we have a very specific way of doing it. Uh, to like end it as fast as possible, basically. It looks like Pharaoh got some good RNG. We'll wait right here. Uh, yeah. Bring it again. Uh, oh, all right. Wait, yeah, dive. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. It, it happens. Yeah. It better but. than an early dive. Uh, so basically, there's three different like ver like patterns you can get in this fight. Uh, I think the late dive costs like what, like 18 seconds or something like that, or early dive. I mean, my bad. Yeah, it's about 15 then, seconds. Like, yeah, and the late dive, which Pharaoh just got, costs about like eight seconds or so. Yeah. So what you'll often see if you're seeing someone like grind this game for like a really good time is. They'll just get the Del Lago, and then the moment they see him begin the early dive animation, they just immediately, like, reset, like, <laughs> faster than you can even see, because it's just like, okay, it runs over. Like, you just lost, like, 18 seconds, like, right out the gate. Just might as well reset. But I mean, late, really, late this, is is when, this is when the run actually starts. Like, getting yeah. past Del Lago, the late dive Del Lago, like, this is actually the first part of the speed run. You're just really grinding those early chapters until you can get to here. Yeah. On top of like, you know, Canyon and Village, which can also be kind of annoying. You, yeah, the Del Lago is definitely the first like big like, checkpoint you want to pass. We're getting to a, an even bigger one in a moment though, in a few minutes here. I will have to do an extra reload here, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So normally like, this is a very minor optimization that you only see top runners go for, but they try to minimize the amount of times you want to reload. Uh, when we get to the cabin, that's ideally when you want to do, uh, I think it's your second reload in the game. But uh, yeah, like we had to do it right there, but that, that's totally fine though. But yeah, uh, for those curious, there is a skip right here uh, you can actually do, but it only works on a 30 FPS, which is a waterfall skip, but it does not work on 60 FPS. I, I forgot why, I think it's because like the, you know, there's just extra collision or something, so you can't actually like clip through here and go out of bounds uh, when you're playing on 60 compared to 30. And since we can't swap FPS mid run, uh, like we can in the newer REs, uh, it's just not viable for, for runs. I always hate it that's good yeah. anyway, so I'm kind of glad I don't have to do it. Yeah, that, <laughs> I, I've never done like I never ran this game at 30, so thankfully uh, I, I I don't have like any uh, any traumatic experiences with that. Yeah, <laughs> Losing, you mess like, it run, up, like, right like after the Yeah, they give you like some like boomer ro runner lore. Like <laughs> back in the day, like we all ran 30 because I mean like before the PC. Uh, came out. Oh, the Steam version came out. It was pretty much all 30 FPS. So everyone, you know, was doing you know that that skip of the waterfall and then some other ones as well, like uh, uh, Salazar. Oh, 
And then there you go. That's, that's a yeah, crazy the, fight. The, the, <laughs> uh, the, the hardest fight in the game, yeah. Um, even but, on PC, uh, yeah, I mean, even on PC, people saw for a long time that 30 FPS is quicker. But in yeah, game, it, there was just a lot of like evolution of strats, um, just kind of learning just how good 60 FPS was, you know, just the faster menus, um, the faster loads. And, it just overall, it just it felt better. I mean, imagine playing a game at 30 FPS in, in 2023, yeah, honestly. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it was, it was disappointing kind of like let go of some of the strats that we've been doing forever. Um, but there's still some really cool stuff we see in 60 FPS, uh, especially later on. Um, just kind of want to get a little bit of backstory to that. Also, like, I think this is the second puzzle in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, they almost like I think all the puzzles in this game have fixed solutions. Thankfully, it's not like um, it's not like RE3 OG, which just has like the random puzzles and stuff. Thank God. <laughs> so puzzles yeah. are just oh, kind man. of like, yeah, just like nothing in this game. The first puzzle in like in remake too, like the, the, the crystal but, uh, marble. You that, or not oh, the yeah. crystal marble, the, um, the, the, the combo lock or whatever that always has like some yeah, it's like, the, it's like the medallion puzzles in a uh, Resident Evil 2 remake they're like yeah they're, they're just super super annoying even when you're more experienced with the run just, just let me press like the exact same buttons every time man but yeah uh, so we do have Ashley now the president's daughter uh, quick lore catch up uh yeah, Leon was sent to Spain to uh, rescue the president's daughter. Yes, he was sent by himself. Uh, don't ask any questions, you know. And uh, yeah, Ashley is probably like the most controversial part of this game, I want to say. Uh, a lot of people have like some very bad memories of her, but like in the run, she's not that bad. There's a couple of rooms where she could be, she could be kind of a troll, but for the most part, she's okay because we kind of have a good idea of like just how she works mechanically. So long as you like, she's always to your left. So ideally, uh, you're gonna see Pharaoh like right here, going to the left side, right here, just doing so a lot of left side pathing. So Ashley stays against the wall and doesn't get stuck at all. And we can also use Ashley to our advantage. We could just tell her to stop following us, basically, and then start following us again. And uh, that'll just make enemies around us aggro, like we're doing right there. And that'll just manipulate the enemies properly. Look, all right, that guy's behaving. Hope. Yeah, he's facing us the ladder. Yeah, that guy. That guy at the ladder could be a troll sometimes. He can just, uh, he could just like run or like he could just be like a, a galaxy brain and just run around the ladder and just end your run. It's just really, really annoying. It's definitely a really useful mechanic, um, being able to tell her to do stuff because normally enemies are not going to be alerted to your presence until they actually see you or hear you. Um, so being able to do that in that farm area, it, it makes for a really interesting thing that just happens off screen. Well, here's Gavin. I'll, I'll let you do Cabins. I don't remember this fight at all. <laughs> I, I can just go ahead and explain. Uh, hold on, I'm just going to wait a moment just so... All right, so uh, Pharaoh is just waiting for like an audio trigger right there. Uh, so this fight is like really, really, really specific. Uh, we're just gonna be wait, like we're basically manipulating Lewis right here by hitting him so he doesn't shoot out the windows and stop the enemies from coming in. We just want as many enemies to come inside the cabin as fast as possible, basically, so we can group them up and just kill them all really fast. With these grenades that we've been picking up throughout the route so far. We're gonna be going downstairs and setting up for another grenade right here. You're gonna see he's gonna knife Lewis twice right here give enemies a, a chance to come inside and we're gonna throw another one right here under the table nice and then we're gonna be throwing an extra one right here as these enemies spawn i think we got kind of unlucky here uh yeah, these two should get probably all the kills. be dead yeah our so this might not be a super great cabin unfortunately uh so even with this like very precise strat that we have of just like manipulating lewis getting the enemies inside it kind of doesn't matter uh, this this is like the point of the game where like the game just does what it wants basically this is like probably this is like maybe the most rng part of the entire run like i, I hate the cabin i think most re4 og runners just hate the cabin at this point it's just a massive reset point just because uh enemies just can just be really weird and they're pathing lewis can just be a troll and just start going ham with his gun and just like preventing enemy any enemies from coming inside and uh, as we're seeing right now, we're just going to be camping at the top of the stairs right here with the shoddy, like, PUBG style. Or, I don't know, whatever the new, like, Battle Royale game is. Just, uh, just camping upstairs the shoddy, killing enemies as they come up. Basically, in order to end this segment, you either have to run out of timer, I think it's like five minutes or something, or you just have to, uh, kill 40 enemies. It's a lot of kills. So, uh, ooh, we are kind of low right here. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Last, uh, shell, too. 
Yeah, that was very fortunate. It's very easy to just run out of shoddy shells right there and just uh, not have enough kills for whatever reason. And then, like, the run's over, basically. Well, it's not exactly over, but if you're going for a good time, you basically just reset if the cabin's not over by then. Are you going to do the... Oh, not the mouse. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. That's a, so, it's a little bit tricky to hit those double chains uh, on controller, um, but like on wait, if you're playing mouse keyboard, you can just bump up your DPI and just like slash all three of yeah. them at the same time. But yeah, so we, we choose to go to Gigante route over to uh, Twin Chainsaw Sisters uh, just because the Gigante route is way faster. Just we can pick up all those items that we need to and just run past run past everything right here. The Gigante is not super smart, so you just get past this area like immediately. It's way, way faster than the uh, the Chainsaw Sister route. But yeah, like JTB was saying, uh, we can basically switch our keyboard controls over to modern and then use the mouse and swing the knife like really fast, like while like whipping our camera down and it'll just hit all those chains on the door in like one swing. It saves a little bit of time compared to doing two slashes. Wait. We got a pretty chill segment here. I'm just gonna ride this yeah. one down over to uh, uh, the Mendez fight. Yeah, the gondola part is like one of the first of uh, a couple of auto scrollers we have in the run. Uh, we are headed towards the end of the village segment, and we're gonna be heading on over to the uh, castle portion of the game, which is the longest seek, like the longest part of the game, basically, and also the hardest, I would say, in terms of like execution and all that for the run. Yeah, I agree with that. Castle is, is definitely really difficult. Yeah, there's a lot of super tricky rooms in Castle. Can't wait for Waterhall. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about Waterhall when we get there. It's funny that that room is problematic in both this run, and I think it's I think it's the same in 4R from what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. also, yeah, Pharaoh just went really fast through his menu right there to combine those herbs that we've also been picking up. We made a green, red, yellow herb, uh, which sells at the merchant for 10k pesetas, which is the currency in the game, which uh, we're going to be using because uh, once we get into the castle, we're just going to be doing a complete like inventory swap. We're going to be selling the pistol and shoddy for uh, the TMP and the sniper, just because they're direct upgrades for what we have right now, and also getting another rocket launcher for later. Yeah. The the semi-auto sniper, it, while we haven't seen it just yet, is just insanely good because it just little literal free headshots um, on like all normal Ganado. So like for water hall and other areas that we just need to clear out enemies, it's super valuable. Yeah, the the sniper in this game, like the sniper, like in most RE games, is just really really OP in this game. So we're going to be using it for quite a while, along with the TMP. The TMP is basically going to serve as like a better uh, better pistol. So right here, uh, another boss fight, Mendez, who's like the village chief. Uh, so Pharaoh is just going to be using some incendiaries right here to kill this boss like really fast. Right here, if you throw the, the incendiary at, and hit him with the barrel at the same time, just get to insta-kill him right here. Nice. Yeah, very, very, very easy fight when you realize that just how much damage the incendiaries do. Yeah, I don't know why the incendiaries just do so much damage to them, but yeah. Uh, I also know on 60 FPS, he does die faster. You need an extra incendiary if you're playing on 30. And uh, I think you got to hit him with a knife as well or something, don't you? I, I, I don't know what the strat is. I just know you need five incendiaries on 30. I know, yeah. I don't remember about the knife, but I definitely get yeah, the, the extra incendiaries needed. Yeah, which you get in the church, I think, before you get Ashley. But yeah, uh, just going to be backtracking now over back to the castle. Like the rest of this portion is like pretty chill. You know, shout out to RPD. I'm kind of disappointed they don't have that in the remake. Yeah, I was a little su surprised by that. <sighs> you would think it'd be pretty easy. I guess it's because they didn't want to just reuse the same asset from 2R or something. I don't know. But yeah, uh, we basically just had to do like a little detour to go get uh, Mendez's fake eye, which we use right here to leave the village, basically. And uh, yep. we're going to have this little goofy portion of the truck right here that tries to run us over, which, uh, yeah, he's got to shoot him. Uh, 
got to shoot the driver in the head like one time with the pistol or just shoot the truck five times. And that just that takes care of that. Uh, only 800. Money. <laughs> yeah, uh, one thing we should mention right now is that the random money drops, the uh, the villagers drop the least amount of money, I think, out of all the enemies in the game compared to the enemies you encounter later. Wait. So we usually try to go for more money drops as we uh, as we get into the castle. As you're seeing right here, we're just selling like basically everything that we've been picking up, and we're gonna be getting the semi-auto rifle and the TMP, like we were talking about earlier. Also gonna be moving some ammo around. Here we go. Yeah, inventory. So if both inventory management and like sorting it like during certain segments like that is huge because. You want it if you ever have to like switch weapons at certain parts, you need to know exactly where that is in the menu before you get to it. So, like putting the rifle, um, in that like right below your TMP, so you just go right into your, your menu, uh, just hit down and you have it there. Likewise, with like a, sh uh, a grenade, we have one on the far right, so we just hit left as soon as we get into the inventory screen, have that equipped, and just you know, just get going because you can lose a lot of free time just. You know, moving stuff around um, in your case um, if you don't know where it's already at. Yeah, uh, one of the things you'll see that separates like top runners from from other runners is like just how optimized the menuing is. Like at a very top level, the menuing in this game is like insanely, insanely optimized. Like you just everything is ideally just like one input away when you open up your inventory, which is crazy. Especially because uh, we never actually upgrade the inventory uh, in this game, at least. I think you do in 4R. I'm not sure, but yeah. I believe but so. But as yeah. you're seeing right there, uh, we only shot one guy at the beginning of the segment, so we just don't have to deal with one catapult on the right. And then uh, we basically just use Ashley and just some timing to basically just avoid all the other enemies. And as soon as we break the castle wall right there, just despawns all the enemies, so... That segment is actually not too bad on this game. It's the way it was in a remake. Yeah, it's a lot harder in remake for sure. Follow me. So one thing we, uh, as you're seeing right there, we left the room very fast. Uh, that was just so we could reset the enemies in this room as we're putting these swords in. Uh, it's a little bit faster just so we don't spawn an additional wave of, en uh, of enemies in here. Wait. Oh. That guy started running a little late, so Ashley wasn't able to hold the door open for us, but that's okay. But yeah, yeah uh, one of the few uses for her. Just being able to leave her at a door so you don't have to reopen it yeah. uh, later on. She's a great uh, door witch. I just us. hope she won't get dropped <laughs> now. But hopefully... Oh, what is this? Ooh, this is a little bit Mimi. What's going on? Oh, man, that's unfortunate. Uh, Pharaoh uh -huh. got some really bad RNG right there. These guys, like, rushed B so hard. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I have no time to shoot the barrel. <laughs> yeah. Normally we shoot the barrel with the TMP there like really fast just so the enemies all die as they come rushing in, but uh yeah that shield guy was fast. Wow. Okay. But yeah, a uh, little fun fact, uh, you don't have to do that room on easy difficulty. I think it's easy and amateur, which is like the JP only uh like difficulty. Uh, along with a couple of other rooms, but we're going to be moving on now to uh, the first mini boss of the castle, which is the Garador, like the, or Wolverine, whatever you want to call him, Freddy. He's like the, the big dude with like the big claws for hands, and uh, he's blind as well. And we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be using the rifle to kill him really fast. We're going to pick up that incendiary as well. I guess uh, her up here, just for yeah, safety. Yeah, it's a good idea, yeah. This is such a cool fight when you do this uh, correctly. Yeah. It's gonna be letting Pharaoh do this really fast. Ooh, nice. All right, nice. Dude, it's right, so, so flashy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's so cool. It's act, it's a whole lot harder than it looks, though, if you're just learning to run. But uh, basically, if you do this thing we call quick scoping, which is it's like letting go of the scope and then scoping back in, it's faster than staying scoped in and uh, just waiting for the cooldown to go away for the sniper. So you, it allows us to kill the Garador like really fast right there by just shooting the Plagas on his back. And yeah, now we're moving on the water hall, which is, yeah, uh, one of the worst rooms in the game. Yeah, oh. this room is Ooh, unlucky. miserable. Yeah, we're doing the, the big boy strat right here. Okay. So yeah, this is a newer strat, actually. I don't want to say it's newer, but it, it, it was after my time, I want to say. Uh, but yeah, basically, we're, instead of using the sniper to kill those uh, kill those crossbow guys at the beginning, you uh, 
You throw down incendiary to kill the first like group at the the entrance right there. And we're basically ooh, this guy almost like all right, that was close. There's a lot of RNG with where the enemies are right here in this room. But yeah, I'm gonna be throwing a precise flash road. That's kind of unlucky we got hit right there, but that's fine. Uh, we're, it's a good thing we're picking up all these heals. Nice yeah. killing that flat, that shield guy. Uh, in this game, I don't think this is a thing in the remake, but uh, it's nice to mention that uh, in this game, the uh, the shield guys are immune to flashes, basically, if they still have their shield up. So they could be uh, they could be really annoying. Oh, God. That was yeah, some that, good movement yeah, there. Yeah, the, the red zealot it was not supposed to be that far up. Yeah, I'm think. not sure why he does that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, also going to be resetting the checkpoint right there that we got as soon as we did that cutscene. So it despawns all the other enemies that were in the first half of the room as we do the second half of the room now, which is where we have Ashley crank these uh, these levers for us for so we can leave. All right, show us those uh, headshots. Yeah, this is the phase compilation clip going on right now. But yeah, just headshotting all these enemies as they come up. And after we kill all these enemies, Sparrow is going to do some looting here so we can just pick up a bunch of stuff that we need throughout the run. Kind of like I dropped the green up. Oh, two of them. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, it's because, that, oh, yeah, it's because, you, it's because you didn't have any heals in your inventory. So that's a thing this game does. If you don't have any heals in your inventory, the game will just give you a bunch, basically, even on pro. And then you get the first aid here, too. So you're pretty yeah, good so on it's gonna heals. Be, yeah, three heals. It's pretty nice. But yeah, waiting for this, waiting for this guy over here. That guy, for whatever reason, just starts running out the door right there. And uh, if you just shoot him with anything and stun him, he'll just stop running. He'll just go back to walking. So we don't even need to like kill him. Just hit him once and then move on. Picking up an incendiary right here looting. as well. Yeah, yeah. checking RNG. Yeah. You don't want to pick up like extra items because they can just mess up your inventory and then you're trying to equip something without really looking at it and it's suddenly like, hey, there's something there that yeah. shouldn't be there. We just ideally want that. I think it's a velvet blue with the incendiary, uh, the money right here, and then you add a grenade that we're going to need for later. Like Mike said earlier, this run is like optimized to hell and back. Like this is just every little thing has been scrutinized in this run to save time, which is why yeah. it's as low as it is now. You even see some runners going for, uh, I think they go for an extra velvet blue pickup in this room. Uh, if they have the time, you ideally want to be as fast as possible right here to get back to Ashley as soon as possible. So you don't lose any time. But yeah, just so we have to, so just so like some top runners have to do some less money pickups ideally. And right here, we're going to be separated from Ashley for the first time. She's going to get caught in this really uh, weird James Bond looking trap that we're not going to see because we're skipping the cutscene. And, and we uh, come we're... to the best part of the castle. Yeah. Uh, introduced to the best enemy in the game, Kappa. So I uh, like to like think as castle is the RNG segment of this run, and it's purely because of these Nobista doors right here. Yeah. I, I was dude. actually like shocked when playing the remake, and there's more Novista doors. I think in, in the remake that there are in the in the in this game. In this game, there's only like three three rooms that have Novista doors, and in, in the remake, you see them in the island, like all the way at the end of the game, which is crazy. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's fine that they're not like that prevalent because these Novista doors are like they're they're bad. They, I mean, they can hit you and stuff, but the real pain from them comes from getting comboed. Um, yeah. Because they'll just keep jumping on you without giving you an opportunity to heal. So you just get jumped on three times and you're, boom, you're dead. Skill issue. Yeah, and they can hit you from really far away. Even when we start using a glitch later to go faster, they can still get you, man. It's it's so scary. Pretty good, yeah. though. Uh, a thing you're saying Pharaoh do as well is he's like turning his camera away from him and that manipulates him because if you're looking at them, uh, they're more likely to do a jumping attack at you where uh, they just like jump on you and you have to do like a QTE in order to avoid them. Uh, if you look away from them, it's a lot more likely that they're instead going to uh, just try to do a swipe at you, which is a lot easier to dodge. And right here, yeah, Pharaoh uh, did a little strat right there where he shot this red zealot with a TMP 
to avoid a uh, cutscene that would normally play if you drop down and don't do anything. It's a little bit faster than uh, watching a cutscene. Here we're coming up with one of those uh, grenade strats we talked about earlier. Yeah. Where just if you if you land, you know what the trick is. It makes it makes the room very fast. Can be quite tricky. Um, also, let's hope I get it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to be doing a pretty precise uh, incendiary throw right here to do a little glitch on this red zealot so he doesn't run anywhere. Because normally you have to chase him around the room and it's really, really annoying, really slow. So let's see if Rogue gets it. That looks good. Yeah, nice. Looks nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Man's dancing by himself over there. But yeah, uh, if you throw the, the incendiary at a precise angle right there and drop down as soon as possible, uh, this... This is this red zealot will just like do that animation right there in the middle of the cutscene and fall down so that like when you drop down, you can just immediately kill him with the sniper, which is a lot faster than chasing him around the room. You hard puzzle time. One, two, three, four. Yeah, <laughs> hardest, hardest puzzle combination in the game. And yeah, here coming up to another potentially super annoying room, the gallery, which uh, has these rocket launcher enemies. All right, this guy has been kind of. Oh, yeah, who's this? Ooh. That's really, that's some bad RNG right there. Oh, I thought that guy frame trapped you right there. Oh, Ooh, it's right, yeah. This room yeah. is just like, you, I, I you don't want to get delayed. I on definitely, it, I definitely jinxed it, but because that guy did something funny as soon as I mentioned that this room could be annoying. All right, nice. No enemies right there. You could potentially just be like Insta grabbed as soon as you opened that door. It's like really annoying. And uh, there's going to be some rocket launcher guys right here trying to shoot us. Uh, uh, Pharaoh paused right there, said that they would miss. And yeah, we're just running to the end of the room right here. I didn't that even was realize a little bit funny, how but early the archer spawned. They spawned like yeah, a I thought the scythe was going to hit you there. That was really close to losing your iframes. Yeah, thankfully in this game, unlike the remake, you get a lot of iframes that you can abuse. <laughs> Makes the game a lot less frustrating. Uh, but yeah, we picked up some uh, some treasure there at the fountain that we're going to sell later because we need the money. And we're going to be moving on to uh, the maze, the dog maze, where uh, this part is pretty spooky if you're playing casually, but uh, thankfully there's a pretty easy trick for dealing with the dogs, and it is similar to the Novisa doors. Uh, you just don't look at them. You just don't make eye contact, and uh, the dogs should not do anything. I don't say that. In my last GDQ run, yeah. they actually jumped me. <laughs> Ideally, like, you just kind of run at an angle, because if you're not, as long as you're not running straight at them, they generally won't hit you, which makes them, like, <laughs> a lot less threatening than they first appear to be. But yeah, this is, this is a pretty pretty simple segment otherwise just running through collecting a few puzzle pieces to, to put into the, the door at the end playing it safe here and doing the white turn yeah uh there's a pretty like there's a pretty tricky line you could do right there to like get past those dogs a little bit faster but it's kind of risky they could just pounce on you and yeah just run to the end right here all right, nice. Nice, nice. Bite. Yeah, that's the first appearance, I think, from... Well, no, she appears earlier, but that's, like, the first time she's, like, formally introduced, I think, in the game. Yeah. Also, a little trick right here. We're going to shoot this little bell to spawn the wine bottle right there, the final boss. Yeah, that bottle just... <laughs> that bottle sucks to hit. Yeah, man, that, that, that bottle could be, like, such a troll. But yeah, Ooh. oh, that's Ooh. so unlucky. All right, we should be good though. Nice. Those heals coming in handy right now. TMP really paying off there to um, shoot that lock uh, quickly off before the God door uh, starts to hit you. Yeah. And then also just showing off how strong it is right now, just literally staggering. All right, like taking out all three of those enemies. Back when the ground, enemies actually staggered. Yeah, back when the stagger actually meant something. But yeah, ru running right now to uh, reunite with Ashley. Gonna be a lot of sniping going on right here. So, uh, all right, are we going for the we're going the double chain hit? Aww. Ah, damn. 
But there's a uh, pixel you can hit right there, or you can shoot. And if you shoot it, uh, it'll just break two of the chains off at once with one shot. It's a little trick you can do to save a little bit of time. A little bit hard to do, though, with the sway going on. Uh, Leon's got the... Leon's got some uh, funny hands that like to move around a lot when he's aiming. Dude, it's even worse than the remake. It's like, I feel like I'm playing Tarkov, but it's really it's just Resident Evil with how much <laughs> he sways. So another pretty... Uh, Pharaoh's going to be shooting this red zealot in the foot right here, so he falls down, and then doing a precise grenade throw right here, and this should kill all the enemies in the room and immediately make Ashley start moving. I think you got it. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. Got it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, uh, also just trying to do as much looting as possible before uh, we go on right here to the Ashley portion. This is the part of the game where we play. It's a, tra tra it's a tradition at this point in an RE game. It's a little portion where you play as a, a side character and we play as Ashley in this game. This part is uh, really, really simple though, as Ashley. It's just a lot of precise movement. Uh, thankfully, these enemies are not like super smart, so... We can get for this pretty fast. You're gonna see right here. Pharaoh is actually that she can grab you. Pharaoh is uh, Pharaoh's not gonna like fully open these gates because we're just gonna like squeeze through right here. There we go. Gonna make it so we don't have to do anything to that enemy at all. I'm sorry I cut you off. What were oh, you no worries, no worries, all good. I was just saying there's a small chance the enemy can actually grab you there, but it's very rare. Yeah. It's like a RNG where he like runs over, like rushes B. But yeah, uh, pretty tricky puzzle if you're playing casually. Uh, coming up right here today to do with uh, actually the sliding, uh, the sliding puzzle. But uh, thankfully, the, it's again another static puzzle solution. So we just know the solution right off the gate. It's pretty fast. Dude, I I literally I hate sliding puzzles like this with the tiles. Yeah. <laughs> so knowing that there was just like a very easy solution for this, it was it was kind of like a redemption for every other sliding tile puzzle in any video yeah. game. Am I crazy or uh, it, was there one in the remake or no? Yeah, I don't it's remember. like a, it's like a hexagon this time though. Oh yeah, so it's yeah, super yeah. Super weird in the in the village. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But yeah, some QTEs right here. These knights are trying to kill us. Uh, this portion of the of the game is way shorter than it is in the remake. They made this part like way longer in the remake. Yeah, Ashley's like internal enemies are the armaduras and yeah, remake. she she has to deal with like ten of them in the remake or something. It's crazy. I actually really liked it in the remake. It was really funny. All right, coming up on chapter 4-1. That's right, we're already at chapter 4. Um, and this is arguably, this is the longest chapter in the run um, and arguably one of the most difficult ones as well. Uh, I, I, I would I would say it's the hardest chapter in, in the okay. run by far. Yeah, I agree. I, I, don't know, I don't know if Pharaoh agrees with me, yeah. Longest and yeah, hardest. There's a lot of a lot of shenanigans uh, in this chapter. A lot of lot of stupid stupid rooms you have to do back to back. Wait here. Also, a lot of RNG that will uh, that will uh, do some prayers for when we get to them. For sure, this is another one of those heavy reset points because of just how difficult it could be. Um, this room is really cool though when you do it fast. Yeah, lethal lava land, as we like to call it. Oh, we're doing a new strat here. So, uh, Pharaoh oh, is. Oh, this got it. Yeah, this is a new strat where uh, you shoot that guy with a sniper and try to go as fast as possible to make that cycle in time. And uh, Pharaoh is doing this so we can pick up the treasure that's right over here uh, next to that guy over there on the right. Oops. Gonna sell for a lot, and I think that makes it so we can sell. Uh, we can skip the chessboard later, right? Yeah, that's correct. the point of it. Yeah. Gotta be shooting that chain three times with the sniper. This part's also. This part is like, it looks easy, but it's not. Like you're, because of the cycle with the carousel in the middle, that's just always, always active. You just have to do this part like as fast as possible, basically. And you have to now, what do a little doing? bit of a, up, uh, uh, what's going on right here? Uh, uh, no. Oh, he was like blending in Man. with the background. I, I, are we gonna make the cycle here? I have no idea. My, oh, oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice, okay. I like the last frame. 
I mean, yeah. really, if you miss it, it's like, what, like five, five, six seconds. But like we said, this run is so optimized that anything, even just missing that, it, it just costs you like a world record or a PB. Yeah, like I, I forgot. I think it's like a 10 second difference right now between first and second in this category. I don't remember. I just know uh, Yushi and Saul can have something godlike times right now. But yeah, for them at this point, like losing, I don't know I, how, how big of a time loss is that, like five seconds or something? That's like huge. Yeah, they're like... Socket and Yushi are literally 20 seconds apart from each other. So that could like yeah. make or break in a, in a run that's an hour and 20 minutes long too. Yeah. It's, it, it's just, it's absolutely nuts just how optimized this is for how long it is. Um, makes it, it's a really cool speed run to do and learn. I don't think it's terribly hard, but once you start hitting that that higher level of just like pushing for for like a really good time, like the skill ceiling is enormously high. So yeah, uh, this part right here, we have to get these two chalices, the king and queen chalice, uh, chalice. And uh, so we have to do these two Wait. rooms. Uh, this is the easier of the two rooms right here, which is the uh, queen chalice room. Doing a couple of statue pushes. It's funny to mention, even the statue pushes in this game are like pretty optimized at this point. Like we try to minimize as like like the least amount of times we need to push the statues. It's kind of the same thing with the, the older REs and like 1R and stuff. And right here, uh, these guys are going to pop out of this wall. There's this drill <laughs> machine that's just in this wall for whatever reason. They've just been chilling there for who knows how long. And yeah, we just... Uh, Shoot him one time with the TMP and it's over. Like it's pretty unfortunate that they wasted all that time for nothing. It's their whole life and just it just led to this moment. <laughs> yeah. And he just <laughs> shut him down with two TMP shots. Yeah, man. It, it, this is the part of the game where like the game starts getting like really wacky in tone, and it, it isn't what makes it such a classic in my eyes. Just the the lava room, those guys in the wall. Like it, it's great, man. I love it. This is another really, really cool room um, to do with uh, the rifle. I'll let him, I'll let Pharaoh just kind of focus on this, but. And then the flash. Yeah, a lot of like, anything with like quick scoping here, like you're just hitting the armaduras once in each head and then flashing to kill them. Um, it, it looks super, like, super cool to pull off. What is it going to be like, barely? Nice. Wait for him to slide. Yeah, I remember that at least. <laughs> Sometimes that third one will just like take the hit and he'll be like, oh, my own. I'm just going to chase it, chase after you. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of like wait a bit. He's, there's a little bit of like a slide he does off that thing in the middle. And that's generally the cue. But uh, there's still like a lot of randomness to this game. And sometimes you'll just see that happen. And you know, for how tight ammo already is, like you can't yeah. be missing those shots. Wait, follow me. And right here, we're gonna be manipulating these guys of Ashley. We're gonna get them to run over to us, and it, we're just gonna hug this left side. Uh, you can just like kind of manipulate them a little bit with some, some precise movement right here. They're not the the smartest bunch. Okay, nice, and yeah, now we're moving on to what is another top five worst room in the game Wait. probably i think a lot of runners would say this is where like you could just lose the run and, and like literally there was nothing you could do about it it's okay. such a okay. small room oh. but oh okay. my god <laughs> dude was like i'm coming for you this is when like novies will absolutely murder you because there's so many of them hanging around they'll it's you know, if you get hit by one you're generally just gonna get comboed by another and then another and then another and yeah, just reset in the room. This is where they introduced the flying novies, and they do die a lot faster when they're in the air compared to on the floor. But uh, since we ideally don't want to shoot them at all, uh, when they fly around, they're like really, really annoying. They could just grab you, and there's just not a whole lot you can do. But yeah, we got some outside of that first bit right there. That was good. Yeah, I would be totally happy with this in an actual like competitive yeah. run. Uh, check for this guy right here. Oh, oh, I knew it. I jinxed it, man. I jinxed it. <laughs> that I was, was going to say the catapult, but let's see what happens. Oh, my. Oh, my Lord. OK. Uh, OK. Yeah, that was like the, the 1% meme right there. Yeah, that, pretty that guy much. just instant, instant turning around. <laughs> <laughs> 
I remember, I think back when I was like hardcore grinding this game, I, I had like a minus 20 run or something, which like was incredible pace, like actual, like almost were pace. And I just lost a run that I got just immediately insta turning and just like rushing B on me. And I lost my, I, I just lost it. I, I, that was probably the angriest I've ever gotten at a video game before. <laughs> Like Resident actual traumatic, yeah. Just actual, makes people mauled. Yeah, actual traumatic experience. I, I still rem like the fact that I still remember it to this day. It just says it all, you know. But yeah, dealing with some uh, crossbow memes right here. These guys can be uh, these these guys can also be pretty annoying. Specifically right there, that guy can like shoot you as soon as you drop. But looks like we're okay. I don't know. If, are we gonna be doing it? Uh, we're gonna be running past everyone right here. We try to. Yeah, uh, prayers up. I, actually, I don't know if this part of his RNG is it. I think this is like just a very precise. Line a you need little to do. bit of oh. him off. Okay, yeah. Uh, as you saw right there, we barely made that line right there where we uh just made it past that scythe guy. All right, the guy didn't charge you from the back. Just this this bridge could be pretty uh memey as well. Yeah, uh, you can have one of those guys just like rush B on you and just like there's nothing you could do. You just set the reset checkpoint. If that happens, it's really annoying. But yeah, Pharaoh doing a little bit of a trick shot right there. Uh, we used the rocket launcher to immediately kill these two Garadors. The air, the armored Garador doesn't die though, and we need to hit the Plagas on his back uh, really fast. With the sniper. And Pharaoh did it while killing that one enemy. But yeah, this is officially the, uh, officially the midway point of the run right here. We're gonna be getting the uh, the classic striker right here and uh, introduce to you the most iconic glitch in this game. Maybe the most iconic glitch in all of our e speed running, I wanna say. I mean, which even is to a, the point that they actually reference it in the remake as well. Yeah, which literally. Is yeah. insane. Yeah, there's literally a reference to this glitch in the, in the remake with the, the striker charm. But yeah, it's called the Ditman glitch. We're doing it right now. Uh, some people call it the striker glitch. But basically, uh, we get the striker right there, we uh, sell the sniper. We get the striker shotgun and the way the glitch works is you aim the striker and before the laser comes up on your screen, you open your inventory and equip anything else. And when you equip it and come out, uh, Leon is moving at 1.5 times speed, which is crazy. The fact that you just move like twice, like 50% faster is just crazy. You're just zooming. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, there's a lot of stuff that can still take you out of this animation, like the cutscenes we saw before. Um, Pharaoh actually dodging that tail there is really good. Oh, nice. the double too. Yeah. If you if you have to, if you either get hit or if you do the QT, you lose your movement speed. You have to do it again. So going for the double right there, so you just maintain that is it's it's super good. Are we gonna be going for the the flashy strat right here? Will we try to shoot him without getting stunned? I guess we are. Nice. Yo, let's go. Very yeah. good, better uh, go. Yeah, super good Verdugo. So yeah, ideally, we I think on every category you use a uh, a rocket launcher to kill Verdugo. Even no merchant, you use your one uh, freebie rocket launcher to kill the Verdugo, because uh, uh, if you don't use the rocket launcher, he just takes forever to die. And the only other way to end this fight is to just wait for the elevator to come up, which is like what like an eight minute timer or something. It's kind it's of ridiculous. So long. Yeah, yeah, it takes forever. It really says a lot when in no merchant we get like one rocket when we use it for like it's not even really a boss fight. I don't know if you would consider it, but yeah, but yeah, it just it takes so long to just wait that out. Welcome. You can buy another rocket for not even a boss fight just to get through the next room faster. But yeah, uh. So we should probably explain. Also, we're going to be using a rocket launcher right here to skip this room. Uh, this also works in the remake, as far as I'm aware. It does, uh, yeah. If you shoot the rocket launcher at this uh, boulder right here, it just instantly blows up. So you don't have to do the whole thing with the dynamite. Nice. It is worth the the, the 30k pesadas that you have to spend. And yeah, first, uh, first out of bounds right here. All right, we are going to be picking up this flash, I guess. Nice. I don't know. Are we... Are our runners skipping that flash now, or is it still a thing? I think I it's a preference. Yeah, it doesn't cost yeah, so much uh, time. First out of bounds right here. Uh, if you use the dip man glitch and then use this uh, zip line to twice in a row right here, it's just going to instantly take us out of bounds because the dip man glitch basically like just lets us do everything faster, including these like animations right here. Uh, it also just like allows us to get to the zip line like faster than it can reset. So it just takes us right out of bounds. So we can skip the double gigantes right here. 
it, yeah, moving on to another uh, pretty awful room, the final Novisador room, Novistory. Yeah, there's, I think people, it, some people hate Novis 2 more, some people hate Novis 3. They're both really, could be really bad rooms. I think this one's a little bit less difficult just because if you have like really good movement, you can get through these without any oh. issues. Um, oh no. Or you yeah. just get memed on. Yeah. <laughs> They're both but, about equally as bad. Oh no! And here it begins. They just start start revving up those keys on you. Check. Oh, another one. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, that is so unlucky, man! Wow. Yeah. I, I oh, saw, I yeah, yeah. yeah. This room, though, but <laughs> What's yeah, happening? Like, you, you just get slowed down a little bit, and they all just they, they're coming. <laughs> the Novies are coming for you. Yeah, marathon luck, unfortunately. All right, he uh, Pharaoh. So, ideally, uh, you want to get here fast enough so you could shoot this group of uh, this swarm. Uh, right here, all with one striker shot and just kill everybody, so you don't have to worry about him. But uh, because we were getting memed on a little bit right there, uh, aye, aye, aye. oh my god, this is so bad. This this sucks. <laughs> uh, can sure, we say Let's see. Uh, gambler's nice. fallacy. Uh, surely the rest of the run will be fine now. It's using all the bad we're RNG free. right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Novies and and especially in this part they knock you out of your dipman as well, so you have to keep reactivating it every time you get knocked down or grabbed or do the QT. Here Sorry, we're gonna doge. be able to use Dipman to just like run straight through this as well. Yeah, we need my, to wait my doge out. is acting up. Alright, we're out of four two. Yeah, I mean again, gambler's fallacy. Uh Hopefully that's the final room, uh, you know, where we have to we have to deal with that. Surely the rest of this run is just free. Smile. We should be fine for a little while at least. Yeah, yeah just got to do some like extra safety heal pickups most likely. We used to pick up that flash, but now we don't anymore. Uh, just due to how the route has changed. Don't need it anymore, thankfully. Makes this part a little bit easier just because the enemies have less time to get to you here. But yeah, uh, I don't know if we explained it yet, but uh, the way that the Ditman glitch works in this game is uh, you move 50% faster with basically anything else equipped. And uh, on top of that, you lose Ditman from like nearly everything. That's like the trade off. So if you get hit or you heal or you open a door, or you use a uh, like a tilted ladder or anything like that that just or in also some cutscenes you just lose it man immediately so we're gonna be like constantly resetting it as all this happens uh and speaking of like losing dip man um so running up so when you run up to like a, a door that needs a key or whatever you can generally just like hit the interact button and use it um and it'll go right to the item and use it but if you go into your inventory and you use it manually right there, you maintain your speed, which is really huge for, you know, how many times we do that and avoiding having to go back into your inventory to set up Dipman again. Yeah, you're going to see Pharaoh just going back into his inventory like a lot before he leaves a room. So you can just like immediately set it up in the next room right here. Uh, arguably the biggest skip in the game still. Yeah, nice. yeah this this one was this was such a huge find when it came out. Yeah, like, good old it, my card skip. Just gonna run all the way to the end. No music. Should, uh, I'm assuming there's no music, right? Yeah. Yeah. So should mention right now this uh, variant of the skip because there's two ways of doing it. Uh, this one right here, which is the faster one, only works on Steam. Steam 60 FPS. That's it. Does not work on any other. It doesn't work on any of the console ports, as far as I'm aware. I don't know about PS5 and stuff, but I don't think it works on them either for whatever reason. Yeah, that's like fake 60 FPS on console. Yeah, I, I never exactly figured out what it was, but yeah. Yeah, anyone who's serious with the game, it just plays. They either play like GameCube or Steam. Yeah. But yeah, uh, by basically, a lot of out of bounds in this game work by basically, uh, you drop down with Bitman active, and because of how like the, the animation is sped up, it just if you do it at a precise angle, it just clips Leon out and you can just move wherever. There's going to be another big uh, skip that we do later as well. We'll talk about it when we get to it. That's like a bit newer, I would say. Did 
to it. Now, like, for whatever reason, when you ran through there, I just remembered, like, the double Verdugo from Rising of Evil. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know why that very bad memory came yeah. back, but it just... <laughs> Was that the Louise Weber one? Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep those yeah, memories going. For, uh, for making a lot of those extreme difficulty mods. I think there's a newer one that came out, though. I don't know if he did that one as well or it was someone else that that like added all the new areas and stuff. Oh, someone really else. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good uh, manipulable there. So he shot the TP once at the foot statue and that lets the enemies know that he's there. So when he runs up there, that dude that was uh, looking at him, like he would have done something different if he just ran straight at him. So a lot of just like small little things that are happening off camera that you wouldn't really notice like if you just only ever seen like one run Ooh, oh man this nice. room is so scary yeah i'm gonna shoot this, this room is so tricky to, yeah this guy is usually not there <laughs> it's very precise it's like all these rooms are like you got to get through it at a certain like time also um, uh worst qte in the game right here uh yeah this is this is arthritis right here <laughs> This is uh, one of the classic like bugged 60 FPS QTEs where uh, you could just die even if you're mashing at like the speed of light just because of uh, how 60 FPS works in this game. It's really annoying. So we just allow people to use turbo again. I mean, you see how fast that button's going <laughs> in this yeah. scene. You have how to be fast so fast, man. If you if you don't do it with a macro, it's it sucks. Yeah, definitely one of the better changes um, to running this game. I, I think I was done running this game before. I came out, but yeah, I, I would have definitely like welcomed that. Also, Donkey Kong Strat, as we like to call it, where you just run up the stairs right there and dodge the barrel. And uh, yeah, right here, I would say this part of the game, I don't know the, the 4R speed run that well, but I would say this part of the run is like actually harder than it is in, in the in the remake. This 100%. This, yeah, is, is, this is just like very precise, like because in the remake, like you can see the enemies that are jumping down and take them out before. These dudes are like jumping off the top of the map, like right onto your elevator. So you have to lighten yourself up perfectly to, to knock them off immediately with uh, the striker. Otherwise, as soon as someone's on it, you're just the elevator yeah. not moving. It's not like a like you're not you're going to get through this no matter what, but you're going to lose a ton of time if you're you're not knocking them off uh, at the right time. Ooh, man, oh, like, like unlucky right here. Right. Oh. Luckily, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and it's very precise too, because like you saw there, like if you shoot them at the wrong angle, they just go into the corner and they're still just going to be uh, chilling there. Yeah. I uh, should also mention it's important to shoot those barrels uh, that we shot at the beginning. If you don't shoot them, it counts as extra weight on, on the elevator. Uh, so shooting them allows, I think, at least, uh, I think two enemies stops it. But if you leave the barrels up, even like one enemy will just stop, stop the elevator. All right, coming up on the end of the castle, and you know what that means. Golden egg shreds. Yeah, so we're getting right here to Salazar, who's like the bad guy of the, the castle portion. Welcome. Pretty uh, iconic villain, I would say. Uh, but yeah, if you've been following up how, uh, how a lot of this run works, you already know we're giving him the RE4 special right here. RE4 special yeah. coming right up. Yeah, first got to use the striker to break the eye. Then the classic. Man, if only we could use the gold egg like we can in 4R. <laughs> Just murder his health in one hit. Yeah. Here, though, we, yeah, we used a rocket launcher. Still really fast. Um, one of the differences here between like 30 and 60 is that you can uh, set up a, a like an airwalk that goes straight through Salazar with Dipman in 30 FPS. Um, so kind of one of the things, another one of those uh, glitches we had to leave behind. But fortunately, 60 FPS with the rocket is still extremely fast. I'm actually gonna yeah, grab some a... extra shotgun shells down here because I have to use extra oh, yeah. lobbies and elevator. Yeah, next to the merchant right here. But yeah, uh, there is actually a skip you could do for Salazar. Uh, it only works on 30, though. Because a lot of people wonder about it on uh, on 60. A little bit more optimization. Um, Pharaoh's playing on controller, but whenever he goes into the merchant 
he's using his uh, mouse scroll wheel to quickly zoom through the inventory. So I actually didn't want to interrupt this. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm casually going out of bounds. <laughs> this is what we call the ion skip. You do it right at the beginning right here, the ion portion. This was uh, probably the most recent skip found. Correct yeah, me if I'm wrong. I, I never really learned this. Like, it was right at the tail end of uh, me, like, not streaming anymore. Yeah, uh, there is a second method of doing it that only works on 30. Uh, but obviously, since we're playing on 60, uh, this new version works on every every frame rate on every platform. So, And it's also faster than the old method. So a lot more optimal. But yeah, it allows us to skip that whole portion of the mirrors right there. And that part of the mirrors can be like really, really annoying. Like we're used to doing it, but it, it sucks still. Yeah. Any, any kind of glitch that just lets us get through the area just without like a fear of a reset is, you know, it's definitely welcomed in the speed run. You know, our boy, our boy. Oven man. <laughs> Oven man coming. <laughs> Funny that they included him even in the remake. <laughs> He's still there. I was like surprised yeah. by it. But I was like playing. I, I got grabbed by him, I think, on my first four hour playthrough. I'm like, oh yeah, they added him, our boy. <laughs> yeah, you gotta give him that. So a little bit of a trick here. Uh, this is only viable because of Dipman. Usually when you get close to that shutter, it shuts. Um, well, obviously, yeah, it shuts shutter. But with Dipman, you can leave it open long enough for them to throw that dynamite and then also run through. Um, therefore, just being able to skip that entire sequence completely. It's really precise timing, though, because you can get staggered by uh, the dynamite and then you're just you know, kind of like waiting it out. Yeah, and uh, we have the introduction right here to regenerators. They aren't that much of an issue, thankfully, in uh, in in this game. I, yeah, I, I this don't know game about 4R. Easy. four R. Easy. In this game, uh, sucks. Yeah, in four R, they they can run and stuff. In this game, they, they're kind of dumb. They, they they can just they walk only. They're they're like uh, they're a little bit slow. Uh, pharaoh has been doing this a lot throughout the run. But a lot of these enemies have like these attack ranges. So like if you get close enough to them, they'll start doing like a certain attack. So generally we'll run up to them and just quickly backstep to you know bait them into doing an attack like there. Yeah, the slam um, so dunk. You get fast. So it makes a lot of these rooms like really consistent, especially for, for professional. So obviously we're playing on like the highest difficulty of the game. Um, that kind of works out in our favor because they're always going to be as aggressive as possible, meaning they're always going to attack when we get uh, close to them, as opposed to like other difficulties where your difficulty may be like low enough that they don't even try to attack you and you may not anticipate it. And you're just kind of like, okay, <laughs> we're both just staring at each other um, and I, I need to get past you. So I, I think I also New Game Professional is, is like the more consistent run of all the new game runs for yeah for re4 um, just because uh yeah on the, the easier difficulties the enemies can uh the enemies can uh, be sleepers and stuff like that they just don't do anything when you walk up to them it's really annoying <laughs> and right here we need to kill this uh, iron maiden which is like a variant of the regenerator that has like spikes all, all over their body and we're just gonna use the uh good old rocket launcher because rocket launchers are like nearly free in this game yeah, definitely one of the better like balancing changes they made in the remake is they like it's like six times as expensive in yeah. the remake to buy a rocket launcher. There's also so a, it every yeah, there's round. also a, I think it's like a limit per area of like how many rocket launchers you could buy, so you can't just like spam them basically. Oh, I didn't know that, but yeah, that makes sense. I think except assisted, I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't run 4R, but I have a bunch of friends who've been routing it and stuff. So I, this is all like secondhand information. Well, we'll be seeing plenty of that, though, because after this run, oh, we're doing, like, like, like Dice said, we're going to be doing a, a remake professional as well. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll, it's, it's, it's definitely been nice. Like, I haven't watched this run in a very long time, um, and I've been grinding uh, remake professional a bit, too. So it's nice. been really nice to kind of, like, revisit this and see all the differences and how that, how less awful of a run this is in classic <laughs> than, it, than it is in remake. Sorry to spoil it. Remake professional run is uh, kind of uh, nah. toxic. I, I believe in our boy Spicy. I believe in him. <laughs> Yay, for sure. It's it's going to be a really entertaining watch. 
But yeah, as you saw right there, uh, we like Ashley followed Pharaoh just because Pharaoh's lines in that room are just like really, really good. But it's really easy to have Ashley get grabbed in that room. But so long as you get to the the end uh, portion of that room, uh, like she just like immediately teleports back to you. So not too much to worry about. And right here, uh, we have to deal with these two Iron Maidens, but we're just going to use a flash to get past him. And then right here, we have the, the good old Wrecking Ball room. I'm assuming we're going to be doing uh we're going to be doing home run strat. Right? Yeah, home run. Yeah, it's been the standard for a while. Is that like I don't wait, I'm not familiar with home run or is this uh, just So one? yeah, so instead of doing the glitch where you have like there's a glitch you could do here where Ashley just doesn't drop down and follow you and uh you just like start up the wrecking ball but, like as the enemies uh, like, spawn into the room but they don't aggro on you. Uh however, it is unfortunately a little bit slower to set up uh compared to the strat Pharaoh is doing right now where you just hit, you put on Ditman and then you just run around you run around the room really fast. <laughs> that is such a good name yeah, now. That. So it's, it, it, the community has dubbed it the home run strat. <laughs> you just run around it. It's a very dangerous though because some of these enemies yeah, can yeah. one shot you. I was about to say I'm glad I don't run this game anymore because I would get what is this? I would get kind of tilted doing if that happened in a run I'd get extremely tilted. Yeah, those uh, those big dudes with the hammers with like the Mad Max armor on could just like one shot you on pro. It's pretty annoying Wait. if they uh, decide to act up a little bit. Follow me, Ashley. The door wedge. Right, gonna be getting right here. So uh, you're seeing Pharaoh do this tech called a, a stutter step, where uh, you basically just like have like you just tap your run button uh, basically to have like Leon like stutter in place kind of while still moving and it allows us to basically squeeze Ashley past like some of these enemies so she doesn't get stuck. And right here, we're going to be moving on to the biggest auto scroller in the game, which is the uh, truck portion. Yeah, this one is just just don't let enemies get on pretty much. Ashley suddenly I, knows dude, how to I drive this, this truck. I, I, I hated this part in 4R. This part was so much more annoying in 4R. Yeah. Ashley just has like these hidden skills where she either knows how to drive a, one of these trucks that has like levers. Like it doesn't even have like a steering wheel. It just it just has levers or she knows how to operate a crane. So there, there's probably some hidden lore there that, you know, definitely in the deal. There's going to be some DLC. She I should like be how taking the class in, B class. In, or in something. the remake, they kind of have a line uh, referencing it like or like explaining it. And it's still like absurd. <laughs> But yeah, uh, as you're seeing right here, uh, Pharaoh is just letting a couple of these guys jump on on purpose right here so we could just shoot him. As you can see, the crossbow enemies on the truck actually do not do anything. They just like look at you. They stare at you. <laughs> and uh, we're just waiting for him to jump on. And the reason Pharaoh is doing this is to get some extra money drops. And right there in the back, the rest of the enemies right here are, uh, are combining into a truck that's going to be turning around the corner right here. Yeah, it just came out of nowhere. Like little uh, Voltron type thing. <laughs> you know, truck is on fire, so you think, you know, it should be out of commission, right? Like, that's how anything works. If it, it's burning down, it, it shouldn't, like, be able to do anything. But this truck is just... It, d it defies the laws of nature. Yeah, th and this truck... <laughs> it, 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 this is like the truck, truck from hell, man. Truck to electric boogaloo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of the cool things about remake, though, was um, it, it was much earlier that the truck that came at you after Castle, they had a like a version of it just kind of like out of commission before you hit the castle on remake. I I popped off when I saw that because I know like only boomers are going to recognize that. <laughs> I'm leaving it to yeah, a little truck stop we got to do right here. And uh, yeah, we just need to go hit this lever, basically. There's a couple of enemies right here we have to get past, but thankfully with Ditman, nice, we got the good RNG. Yeah, that's the good easy RNG. Attack. Yeah. yeah. This place isn't so bad, because if for whatever reason you got like slow RNG here and when the guys drop down, you can just reload the checkpoint and then just immediately all the enemies are despawning. You're still in the same place. I did not check money, by the way, but I'm guessing Pharaoh did. Do we have enough for the rocket launcher? I'm a little uh, bit check? low. Oh, uh, damn. I could need like one or two more drops, but even if not, that's yeah. back up money hey, in the there, next there'll, area. There will be, be an opportunity right here. Uh, this is the final portion of the auto scroller. 
This part, uh, this part sucks. This is like easily the most uh, Monka Giga part of the part of the truck section, where uh, these guys that start dropping down onto the truck can just spawn plug us now, which oh, are like those. God, now I remember that. Yeah, yeah. They can, they can just spawn the, 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 the tentacles out of their head. And for those who don't know that the, those plug us enemies, if they hit you on pro uh, without any healing upgrades, without any yellow herbs like we have right now. Uh, if they hit you, you just insta die, like straight up on bro. It's kind of crazy. The Plagas are by far like the most dangerous enemy on bro, I would say. One of the most dangerous enemies. Nice. You can generally stop them from running, jumping on, because um, if you're like standing on the edge, they'll like try to attack you, you know, from the edge. But because the truck stops so much right here, like you just got to deal with them. Nice. Some good money drops right there. We got three. Two plug out sure. Oh, this is kind of unfortunate, though. Oh, man. This is going to be. All right. One of them is gone, thankfully. Oh, there we go. All right. Nice. All right. Woo. Good. Because then Woo. you got to shoot this truck, too. And if we have Plagas there, just like just comboing you. But yeah, I've definitely lost runs here because. I think we all did. RNG. <laughs> yeah, the timing is really tight on, uh, on shooting that truck right there. If. Uh, if basically if you don't uh if you're not fast enough to shooting the truck you just die and you have to do that whole last portion again it's such a massive time loss oh no <laughs> yeah, that, that was difficult. optimal that was optimal what we did right there uh so the reason pharaoh is going for as many money drops as he could is so we could buy a rocket launcher at that merchant right there rather than at the next one it's just a little bit faster a little bit more optimal Oh, don't get here, dude. And yeah, we're gonna be getting on to uh, the the first like the, the 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 big movie that we have to watch towards the end of the run that uh, everyone is kind of familiar with. JTP's favorite cutscene. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we've had we had some fun with this back in the day. I'll let you guys take care of this. See if I even remember like. What, what's being said without any sound on my end. Been a long time, comrade. Been a long time, comrade. Yeah, okay, never mind. I remember this. <laughs> it's been... It's been... I gotta see, when's the last time I booted RE4? Curiosity. Oh wait, no, I did it recently because I was trying to get the randomizer to work for fun. I haven't really played this game in like three years or so, but it's just funny just how quickly this comes back to me after how many hours I put into this. <laughs> Can never fully let it go. I'll be in the retirement home doing my uh, RE4 Steam runs. Leave Ashley out of this. Well, all the new kids are playing like RE6 remake, remake. America, like you, I'm American. I still think old Krauser is better than new Krauser. Oh, for sure. That's, I don't yeah, know if that's a I hot agree. take or or what, but this Krauser is actually like more intimidating. New Krauser is just like. He's got he's got issues. Just screaming uh, at you. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like the part in the in 4R where like Krauser just like goes full body horror mode and just like starts like yelling, just like screeching. Or I'm like that that kind of won me over. I'm like, okay, this this guy's all right. <laughs> umbrella. Almost umbrella. Enough. So like this was kind of a big moment like story wise because. Umbrella really has it like so you came from like Resident Evil 3 and, and Code Veronica and Umbrella is just like done and then suddenly Krauser's like name dropping Umbrella again and oh my god what's what's going on it was it was kind of a cool reveal at the time yeah especially because like in this in this part of the timeline like they they say in the intro cutscene that Umbrella is basically done after the events of like uh RE3 and CVX. It's like you Umbrella is not supposed to be a thing anymore, but they apparently are. <laughs> Maybe it's about time you told me the reason why you're here. Always lurking in the shadows. Yeah. Yo, shout out to Ada. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Another super campy moment right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those freaking lasers, dude. So again, it is always the same QTEs for these lasers, so Pharaoh can just... On this version of the game, you could just like spam uh, the two possible uh, QTE combinations that you get, basically, and just... Uh, you will never fail it, basically. It's really, really easy on Steam. Nice little skip there. Just uh, turning around uh, and operate, hitting that, that button causes it to come a lot faster instead yeah. of having like, the lasers. So, small little time thing. Yeah. Any chair but enjoyers? Taking a quick little break. There's no time, there's for no resting. time for resting. <laughs> I'm going to move on. I'm glad they did that again, though, in the remake. It's, it's it, one of my favorite things of remake is just that you can tell the people that worked on it like had a lot of love for this game so it's nice seeing those small little easter eggs that you you wouldn't really know unless you've played this game yeah and you actually the when you regain control of leon it does show you a, a, a hidden treasure in the back of the room as well so it kind of rewards you for doing that for that little moment a right cheeky little thing from the level designers yeah just... But yeah, moving on right here to U3. So this chapter is basically just like a boss rush. We're going to have to do two bosses like back to back. And this uh, this first part of U3 is like broken up into three phases of each of these like cargo containers. And with Bitman, it's thankfully not too bad, but still it can be a little bit scary because uh, U3 can one shot you. Yeah, Pharaoh's opening up a lot of these uh, doors early so he could just uh, dip man through. It's pretty precise movement here still. It's uh, just that way, like, you're not getting hit by U3 at all. Um, yeah, he can, he can one shot you potentially if, yeah. uh, if you're slacking. Ooh, all right, we're doing we're doing the fly. Like, okay. Yo, nice. I hate that strap, man. I hate it too, to the stay. I, <laughs> I always went for the, the one in the corner or just like yeah, standing the, back the, and the, throwing the, it. The old, old reliable uh, grenade in the corner. Yeah. But, yeah nice I, little clip. It goes through, hits the thing instead of having to run all the way through, and then and then U3 dies. Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. One we nice one knife. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say really quick, uh, I'm going to make sure that next run Spicy also sits down in the chair. He has to do it. Surely he will do it. Surely. Yeah, yeah, of course. The, the, the room that's nowhere even near the speed run. <laughs> well, now he has yeah, to. Just, it, yeah, now he, now he has to be, do all the backtracking. Uh, I'll be honest, Sorry, uh, I did not know about the chair until after I finished the game. <laughs> after I finished 4R. I didn't know it was there. Yeah, it's kind of like a... It's just backtracking through the castle to get to it. But yeah, speaking of this boss rush, we know first we did U3. Uh, now we're heading over to uh, Krauser again. Kind of a really cool fight. I think like this is probably my favorite chapter in the game because uh, it's just so mechanically involved. Um, and the Krauser fight is just really, it's really cool to do because uh, it's kind of, it's it's kind of unique with uh, just how it is done compared to other fights. But yeah, as you saw right there, uh, we also sold the TMP finally, uh, like RIP to the TMP. Like we used it for, it's, I think it's the weapon we use throughout most of the run. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we swap it out for the Killer 7, which is a Magnum that we get right now. Which is a reference to the Capcom game that came out around the same time, named Killer 7. Alright, gonna be doing a... Uh, 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 no. Are we resetting here? I think we're fine. I, I think we just do the strat right here knife, right? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, this is a nice. little bit of a newer strat right here. Yeah, I was about to say, I haven't seen that one before. Yeah, we used to run up over here, grab the Magnum ammo, turn around, and knife him because uh, a lot of people probably noticed already, but uh, in this game, and I think in 4R as well, uh, the knife just does a ton of damage to Krauser. Specifically in this game, like knife knife swings just do as much as like Magnum shots. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, three phases nice. we got to do right here. I would argue this is like maybe the hardest part of the, the entire room right here, which is a statue. Yeah, it's not even like the fight itself. It's just getting this clip and then being able oh, to... Barely. Uh, oh, barely. It's like a it, pixel too far. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yeah, uh, because it, Leon goes so fast doing the pushing animation with Ditman, you have to kind of time that push like very precisely to get the ideal statue push or the optimal statue push, I should say. But yeah, you got to deal with all these drones right now. But again, since we have Ditman, we're just really fast. So it's whatever. Yeah, the, the drones that literally only show up in this segment without yeah. any explanation. Crowder just has got the tech for some reason. So you can see them for like five seconds and then never again. Yeah. And right here, we got the the, the body horror part where like Krauser just uh, turn, like Witness transforms. The power. Yeah. yeah, so there is a setup right here. Pharaoh's going to do nice. Gonna activate that man right here. Turn around, and we're gonna basically like stun lock Krauser right here in the corner. But yeah, as you see right here, we're just dead manning and then abusing the knife to basically lock him in the corner so he can't do anything. Nice, real easy fight, but it's it's super satisfying to get that off. If you miss like a knife too, like you can't hit him in the face too early, or it just kind of screws up the stack. Yeah, and it, that's kind a, of get owned. That, it's a strat that looks really easy, but if you mess up at all, it's like it's over. Like he, he'll just get out of the corner somehow, or like on 60 FPS, his arm hitbox is like so huge, and it can just block your knife slashes. It's I so already, annoying. I already know why you're saving. Yeah, <laughs> that just, it brings yeah. back really bad memories. Not taking any chances. Um, but yeah, just going back to that, like just a lot of this looks like a super easy run, but it really speaks volumes about how much Pharaoh has played this and just how mechanically uh, good he, at, he is at it. To see such a clean run done in uh, like a marathon setting, like the only real issue was literally at the start, just missing the grenade. And after that, it's yeah. fine. Um, it really is like, oh. it's super impressive Ooh. from like, no, from someone who knows how bad this run can be. Um, I just wanted to. Oh, the double KO. Oh, oh, that's unlucky. I think that yeah. guy revved up early, right? I got some extra heals, so it should be okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're good on heals. But yeah, this is like the part of the game where it just becomes an action game, basically, uh, with the introduction of Mike, the helicopter pilot, who uh, helps us by shooting all these enemies. Uh, however, for this part right here, we're actually going to reset the checkpoint. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to make it so uh, Mike is not going to help us out right here in this room. So we don't have to watch a cutscene of him blowing up one of these towers, which is actually a little bit faster than uh, watching the cutscene, even if you get good RNG of him blowing up one of the, the, the second tower, the tower on the left here. This room is actually, I think, a lot more difficult in this one compared to Remake because of all the mini guns. Like, they're just... They're just laser accurate here. Um, yeah. So you can get caught out and they'll just, just shred you and screw up your dip, man. And then there goes like the timing of the room and it, it just goes really I'm not just how much damage these guys do, man. Like it's just, if you're not completely popped out at this point, you just die. It's very easy to get to this one. Like we're what? We're one hour and 26 minutes in. Like this is easily a run killer as well. We've just like five, ten minutes left on the run. And do it. All right. Is it? Are we getting... Aha, no right, we're, through, we're, through, we're through the crashing yeah. gate. There's a random chance the game just crashes at that gate, and no one knows why. Yeah. It just happens sometimes. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. We've known about that crash, I think, since the game. This port came out back in 2014, and the devs just, like, never fixed it. Like, it, like it literally... People have been complaining about it, like, forever, and it just never got fixed. It killed so, world record just, pace runs before. Yeah, it, mm. it's happened to me as well. I think like once or twice on the like actual run, and it's just you just got to learn to deal with it. It's just it sucks. No matter what category you're doing, it, it can just happen. I think my favorite like crash or whatever to this day has been when I was doing No Merchant and Kra we got to Krauser and he just didn't do his dialogue in the cutscene, so we just oh, sat yeah, there I just looking that, at yeah. Krauser, <laughs> <laughs> just like we I guess we're done. Yeah, he just like stares at you. It just doesn't do anything. It's really funny. Uh, this room is also really bad. Like, he, like I said, the, we're still like, we're really close to the end. But these final two rooms are uh, like, they go really poorly. And it's really difficult. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I frames. Oh, man, this is going to suck. He's going to have to do some heals here. The flail hitbox on these guys is so dumb it, on 60 FPS. These flail guys can just hit you from the moon. It's really, really bad. 
Oh no! Oh, and then that guy could just be camping the sa- the ladder too and hit yeah. you as soon as you get out. I and would argue you that this, this, is a, this is another like top G, like worst room in the game. I oh think, yeah, I would put I this above almost like, many rooms. Yeah, this is like maybe worse. Than Remember how many rooms, heals I had? They're all gone. Yeah. Uh, another bit right here. We're gonna be fine here. Yeah, you can like potentially get shot by a crossbow guy right there. All right, nice. All right, we should be good now. Like once, once you're past this room right here, like you're basically like scot free. I want to say. Yeah. And then now the run actually begins. Like all the RNG is gone. Yeah. From here on out, it's all just like execution, basically. But yeah, we're gonna be running right here. So uh, we got Ashley back after we didn't have her for like half the game. A little bit of nip there too. You know, telling Ashley to stay gets. Uh... Uh, the JJ to the, the the back to start walking towards you and do the yeah. attack. So just fun little. There's just there's just so many little things that happen behind the scenes um, that you wouldn't know until like you're actually like grinding these rooms. Yeah. So uh, two killer solid. seven shots right here into the rocket launcher. And that's it. Ada's gonna drop us the rocket now. And like as is already tradition at this point, we just gotta get the. Uh, Get the final rocket launcher to end the game right here. Yeah. You don't even need to like hit it. You just need to be like aiming in the general Yeah, he direction. just has to be, he has to be somewhere on camera. Basically, <laughs> it, it'll work. Uh, so yeah, uh, now final stretch of the game, which is like the iconic uh, jet ski escape sequence right here. And I'm guessing we are going to be doing the uh, the ultimate strat right here. Of course. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't do this, the run, you just got to reset the whole run. It doesn't matter how much time you lose. If you've been on world record pace, it's not it's not a valid run, man. Gotta be doing a checkpoint reset right here, so Ashley teleports over to us. And final dip man of the run. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, see ya, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> Just zooming out of there. I don't know if you guys have seen the variant where like Ashley goes first instead of Leon. <laughs> oh yeah, we're at, like for whatever reason Leon's like slower, so she just yeah. takes off and he's just there. Yeah. So it's he's still in Ditman as you saw, like Leon still clipped through Ashley through there. So Ditman still was going. Like if you look closely before that cutscene, like his his hands like don't match up with uh the Jeski handles there. But once we get the cutscene, then it just goes back to normal. Yeah, uh, gotta be doing time in about like 10 seconds, like less than 10 seconds right here. So get ready on that. Dude, you get a whole minute. Like, time the, the, the remake timer is so. No, time. And time. Yeah. GG's. All right. Easy. GG. Easy clap. A few mini rooms, but overall not too bad, I think. Yeah. That was pretty solid. Solid, run. solid marathon run, yeah. I'm only salty so about like the. God the I'm only salty like about four, the mess grenades throw. <laughs> Four or five years ago, this would have been like a god tier run. I'll just say that right now. Yeah, like I think my PB before I stopped was like a 131. And it was like five years ago or something. So this run has just been massively improved since then. Yeah. Thanks. It's always wild just to see uh, the OG RE4 get absolutely uh, destroyed, really. <laughs> Obliterated, pretty Story much. Of my life. Yeah, it's a really cool speed game. Like when it goes well, I say it, it makes for a really good, just like marathon showing. In my, in my opinion, not biased at all. Uh, yeah. So let's see that final IGT that we got here. Ah, one seventy one. Yeah, solid. Yeah. Decent. I'll take it. Considering how bad some of those <laughs> some of those rooms went. Yeah. Also, we I freed the dog. <laughs> I did for yeah, the dog. Of course. Most important part. Uh, very good run, though. Uh, it, was, it was definitely a, a fun watch. Uh, while we Thank you very you much. Here. Uh, a Pharaoh, uh, one, do you have any uh, shout outs you want to give? And two, if anyone wanted to find you and watch more RE4 or RE4 Morning or anything RE4, pretty much, or uh, really just anything in general, where can they find you? Uh, mostly on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Pharaoh Zero. That's why I'm streaming almost daily. At the moment, mostly RE4 Remake, but also Classic RE4 and some other stuff too when I feel like it. Uh, besides that, quick shoutouts to my chat, Dr. Nod, Bagger Drive, Snuffle Muffins, Vanito, and everyone else. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the run. Absolutely, cheers. Uh, it was a very enjoyable run, so I do want to say thank you all again for being here. It's uh, 
Great to see RE4 Classic done by a classic group of professionals, so to speak. <laughs> so, uh, thank you all so much. Uh, we have one more run for you all tonight. Uh, we're going from the classic professional to the modern professional. Uh, we'll be setting that up in one moment, so don't you worry, we'll be right back. Stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs. We'll be right back. Alrighty, everyone, we are back from the break and hopefully enjoyed that classic professional run of RE4. Uh, today we have uh, more than a few professionals among us, so we are going to be diving right on into the fresh experience of the Resident Evil 4 remake. This game has absolutely taken, uh, I guess, the world of gaming by storm as a whole, not even just speedrunning, horror as a whole, and gaming as a whole. So I'm sure everyone wants to see just how busted you can get RE4 Make Pro at this point in time. Uh, Anyway, this category is wild, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I guess this is a GDQ debut having it here. So here is Resident Evil 4 Remake Professional with Spicy. Take it away. Hey guys, my name is Spicy. Um, as I just said, I'll be showcasing RE4 Remake um, Professional. Um, unlike RE4 OG, well I guess RE4 OG also has crazy RNG in Pro as well. The RNG in Remake Professional is insane, so... Uh, we'll be making a lot of safety saves and taking some sections a little slow to make sure we don't die. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start up this intro, and I also have on couch with me, um, 7 Ray D and Captain Ezekiel, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm uh, 7 Ray D, and I also speedrun this game a lot. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I'm Captain Ezekiel, I too speedrun this game. Awesome. So the intro to this game is uh, in the, the cutscene we just skipped. Uh, basically, if you are somehow not familiar with the story of RE4, um, we are Leon Kennedy and we are tasked to go save the president's daughter in some place. Do you guys know where this is? I don't actually know where this is. Spain. Yeah. No, you You're in Spain. Spain. Totally. Anyone home? I think. I think they use <laughs> unnamed country, but it uses pesetas and they all speak Spanish. Yeah, but it's not yeah. Spain. But it's Spain. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, unlike the OG, this game uh, on professional difficulty doesn't give all the saves at all. So uh, death can set us up quite a bit behind. So that's why we'll be. You're gonna see a lot of saving during the whole run, just because there is no auto saves. And obviously, for safety, uh, we don't want to reset all the way back in a lot of sections. So. Yeah, so similar to RE4 OG, and unlike the other like recent RE titles, this game actually gets started pretty quickly. Um, no like super long intro section. Uh, pretty much right now we're heading to the village, which is going to be... It's going to be something. Um, the strat that we use is extremely random. Uh, it's very fast when it works, but it's very random. So I'm going to make a save with this first type right here, and we're going to hope that it goes okay. Hope that our grenades <laughs> work. <laughs> Yeah, pull up for you on that one. You also probably notice when Spicy goes upstairs, he's crouching and running kind of in like a rhythm. Um, that's kind of this game's version of stair skating if you're familiar with the other RE titles. Uh, Leon goes a little bit slower upstairs when he's in combat. If you crouch and sprint um, to pull yourself out of the crouch animation, you get this little tiny speed boost when you start sprinting, which saves a, a small amount of time, but it is noticeable going upstairs only in combat because Leon is slower in combat than he is out of combat. Yeah, we're actually about to enter the first village encounter and whenever you aggro or start the actual like fight, you have to get 15 kills for this fight to end. And this first kill we do here doesn't actually count because it's a stealth kill. Uh, we just do it so we can set up for a good grenade here in the beginning. And, uh, in the beginning we want to get 6 kills, because that will spawn another wave of enemies, which sets up for a second grenade. So let's see how this beginning part goes here. I'm going to start by shooting this guy out right here, um, to give the enemies time to pile up inside and also give us one of the kills we need. This is the part where we pray. Here you go. Uh, I'm going to do a cope strike here, where I spam pause in hopes that it makes the nade kill more people. We actually have 8 kills off that, which is really good. And then we're going to try to get out here with 30 FPS. Oh. It's a lot of punching. 
And then we have to do one more nade here, which is arguably even more random than the first one. Dumb question really quick. Oh, nice. How come on the tool the kills has a Z on it? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Memers. Oh. <laughs> Spice is hoping to have a pile here outside this window, which is not too bad of a pile, actually. Uh, 14, two more kills needed. That's the bell. Lock and bottom. It's actually really good. Can't ask for a better one yeah. for a marathon, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That will not be happening again, ever. <laughs> Where's Hurgan going? Bingo? Guess I could also mention, uh, if you saw me shoot out that, take the time to shoot out that window up there, that's actually for a reason. It's for later, um, chapter five, I think it is, when we're going to cabin. Um, if that window is not shot out, there's like two enemies on this path that'll get aggroed early. You can end up getting grabbed, so. There it is. There's also very precise uh, money routing for, for this as well. Because um, we do need a lot of upgrades and stuff to get through this. So we're picking up certain treasures on the way that are like in path. We don't really have to go out of the way for too many treasures in this. Do have enough money? Yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the stuff is like we've routed out a lot of the things that are on the way and it kind of works out nicely. Um, I guess there's few mechanisms we could talk about in this game that is not in the original. We do have the knife in this game, but the knife has been expanded with the parrying system in this game. So you can parry attacks, for example, and uh, range attacks and all that, but uh, in the professional difficulty, you can only do a thing called perfect parry. And uh, the perfect parry is only like few frames compared to like any other difficulty. In all the other difficulties, you can just spam the parry button and almost always just parry everything. But on this one, you have to actually time it on the few frames that the game tells you, okay, now is your time to like perfect parry. And uh, it's very hard to pull off, but um, obviously we try to not rely on it, but sometimes you have to try to just react and hope you'll nail the parry. Yeah, and the one good thing about perfect parrying in Pro is um, perfect parrying actually like fully staggers enemies uh, to where you can kick them, which is really nice in some situations. So you do get rewarded for it at least. There are certain areas in this game where perfect parrying is like, it, it will say, it's like life or death in certain situations, especially when uh, Salvador's or Bella's are involved, Chainsaw people. Uh, the, though it's not required a perfect parry, but missing a parry is very dangerous in this game. There's a lot of different types of enemies that we really don't like uh, in Professional, but the biggest threat are unarmed enemies. Um, you'll notice, and hopefully it doesn't happen often in this run, but unarmed enemies uh, have a very strange behavior um, where in Professional, if you get grabbed or punched, um, the follow-up is an instant and unavoidable. So if you get punched by an unarmed enemy, you will be instantly grabbed after. And it takes out a massive, massive chunk of health, um, which is what makes pro so volatile and difficult. Because um, if you get caught in that and another enemy is nearby, you can go from 100 health to just dead in, in a matter of two seconds. Yeah, the enemies can do some insane fighting game combos in this one. Like I had a, a, like a Molotov dude punch me, grab me, and when he grabbed me, he dropped the Molotov from his hand mm -hmm. on my feet and burned us both to death. Like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, the enemies are just insane sometimes with this. Yeah, it's, it, it's, that's no joke. It's, it's extreme. It's, it's really, really rough. <laughs> uh, but that was chapter one. We found Luis. That's the president's yeah. daughter. We can go. Took my gear. <laughs> Actually, very happy with how that village went. That was what I was like the most scared for. Yeah. Actually, what I'm most scared for is this part up here, but we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. So yeah, chapter two. In the beginning, we have been captured, so we lost all our loot. And uh, the game wants to teach us about my things, stealth kills, and parrying in this section. But um, yeah, we do end up killing a few enemies here because. In this marauding we've done, we do try to sell a lot of heals. And this one enemy here particularly drops a green herb. Now it can be used to create uh, big healing items that we can sell for a lot of money. 
Yeah. It's actually a little cruel and messed up how valuable Capcom made healing items, like, money-wise. So it kind of forces us as runners to, like, take them and sell them when we'd really rather use them because of how often you can get destroyed on Professional and how the yellow herb combinations increasing your max health help a lot. But uh, each combination sells for 10k. So we want to sell about three of them and maybe even four if we if we can do that later. Uh, it's just because of the money we need to upgrade certain weapons to allow for our routing to uh, to work. Incl including first aid sprays, we too sell a lot of those. Uh, <clears throat> and now Spicy's coming up on uh, a very exciting and a lot of runners' very personal favorite parts of the game. This is TNT Valley, Red Mist Valley, whatever you want to call it. Um, we call it Red Mist Valley because of what happens when a TNT hits you. You turn to Red Mist. Uh, the issue with this area and why it's a struggle is there are a lot of Ganados placed in different areas throughout this uh, arena, and they all throw dynamite. Um, if this dynamite lands within like a like a five foot radius of you, you will instantly die if you are not within any sort of like iframe. Um, and this is where it gets hard. So when Spicy gets into this house, they're basically all aggroed now. And there's uh, some throwing them outside. You'll see little arrows show up above and around Spicy. Those are dynamite. Uh, this is one right here that he's going to iframe because there's one standing up here. Uh, throwing them and he gets the emblem he needs. Now what he has to do is get across on the other side go up and turn a crank to open the gate to get out. And there's dynamite flying all around him, basically. You can see the arrows popping up. Uh, it's random how these are thrown and where they get thrown to. Uh, oh, and these guys are doing a bit of trolling on the stairs. 30 FPS. I see. Oh, and there we go. And there that, it is. That's why we love this area. Yeah, that's Red yeah. Mist Valley. Yeah, that yes, spicy. Like <laughs> the worst part about it is the AI just like will read where you're going. Like they led that in front of Spicy. Like how? In what video game on <laughs> earth are, is AI leading a one-hit kill? Not even like a boss enemy. It's just these are just regular enemies. Just let it right in front of them, and yeah. yeah and to give you guys an idea, like we are like a month in into this game, and we've like. This is the best we've got so far, but it's like this area is just impossible to map out because there's so many enemy AIs in this area, and sometimes the enemy AI just like doesn't work the same way. Like the, the like the AI gets like slightly delayed sometimes for some reason, and that changes everything when one enemy does something different. So it's like impossible to have a hundred percent consistency here. At least uh, so far, it seems what we've done. So um, yeah, the trade is right too. Because even just looking up there, Spicy climbed the ladder, and the AI last time threw the dynamite to give Spicy eye frames. This time he didn't throw it at all. Uh, so it just changes because the Ganados can like run into each other, install their own animations, and like trip, like and stuff. It, it's it's kind of crazy, but. This up here at top part is where it kind of gets you another stretch where Spicy is going to basically pray that these, the sky underneath him behaves and he'd shoot the... There you go, yeah, he shoot dynamites out of their hands to really get them to, to stop throwing it. Uh, what can be messed up is they'll survive it sometimes. Even their own explosions, they can survive and just throw yeah. another one. Uh, but he's at the last part of it where he's basically in the clear from explosives now to get out of the area, but yeah. Average red mist valley. Yeah, I'll take one death there. Honestly, yeah, could have been yeah, much honestly. worse. So you can get stuck there for so so long. I've actually been blown up at the exit at this last lady too. By the that, dynamite. That. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's insane this sequence. Oh. But hey, we got past the second uh, reset point of the run. Eh? It's two and fifty-five or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that part sucks. That was like one of the main reasons I made my estimate for this so generous, because I was prepared to just die there five times in a row. But, yeah. but for uh, here or now, the run is mostly a bit more consistent for a while. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of just random things can happen always, but... Yeah, you'll see us going out of the way if in that cubby, like there was, there was a large resource, I picked, large resources I picked up, and you'll see me going out of the way. 
for large resources in a few spots because they're very, very important. Um, they allow you to craft heavy grenades and flashbangs. Um, heavy grenades we use for two boss fights, and flashbangs we just use for a lot of rooms to get through them without dying. Flashbangs are like really, really valuable in this game. Can also be used to craft sniper ammo if we need it, but shouldn't need to do that unless we get really unlucky with drops. Basically in this run, all these boxes, at least like 90% of them are random loot as well. So it's like, you just have to kind of adapt on the loot, like depending on what loot you get and all that, all the time. Uh, it comes more prevalent in a lot of the late game. Early game, we kind of have a lot of set loot, you know, what to pick, but yeah. Also, one thing to note is all the puzzles in professional are uh, in all difficulties are set, um, so we know the solutions to all of them. The the thing about RE4R though is professional and hardcore share the same solutions to all their puzzles, and standard and assisted share the same solution to all their puzzles, but they are different from those two to these two, um, which is their way of I guess making it a little bit of a different playthrough. Is uh, if you went from standard to hardcore or to professionals, you would have some different solutions, but. They're, they're consistent uh, when you do your playthrough. So we know the solutions to everything on that lock. Though the solution is the same, uh, that lock is RNG in terms of where it starts. Keep talking, keep talking. Make sound, yeah. make noise. No. Yeah, Wait, nobody talking. Here. There's nothing happening. There's uh, nothing. Yeah, nothing is happening. Nobody heard anything. There's nothing. Nothing was caught in a trap. Yes, nothing was caught in the trap. He freed I guess himself, I should explain. The, the, yeah, yeah. The the reason that we uh, we cannot grab the dog there, it would make the run very very bad at Gigante because um, the dog actually does a scripted kind of health reset on Gigante, and he actually heals him, uh, which we do not have the ammo to deal with in this. So. Yeah, we like barely have enough ammo to do uh, the Gigante fight. Yeah, as Spicy mentioned, every time the dog shows up to help in the Gigante fight, if you save him, um, he heals the boss actually. So it actually just makes the fight more of a mess to do. So. I will say though that if you do want to see Spicy save the dog, make sure you follow Spicy on twitch.tv slash spicy. You'll see you there. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do some combining here. As we talked about earlier, the herbs are worth a lot. Um, so we're gonna be aiming to sell three red, green, yellows uh, at the first merchant stop in a little bit. They sell for 10k each. We're actually working on a new route, uh, which I get. I can talk about a little bit later in, in, like when we get to the part where it would matter, but we're working on another new route, which I didn't feel like was super marathon friendly yet, so I'm not doing it now, but basically you would sell like every herb mixture that you can get your hands on throughout all of castle to be able to uh, buy another rocket, but you basically have to not get hit in that route, so. Yeah, the, the catch with like uh, uh, RE4R versus RE4OG is uh, we're actually limited on RPG purchases. Um, RPG purchases don't start until chapter uh, four, I believe. Or seven uh it's i think it's four and you get them every three chapters you're allowed to repurchase um the difference in re4r is that depending on which difficulty you're playing on the price of the rpg goes up um so i believe in assisted it's 50k or something along those lines and then it's 80 in standard and then it goes up to 160k which is what it is on uh professional uh so it's kind of hard to get 160,000 every three chapters and not lose a whole bunch of time for it yeah, that's like six times more expensive than in the original game. So, yeah, it's a lot more treasure and money rotting to use rocket launchers in this one. Yeah, and also, um, it wasn't really mentioned, but this is any percent. Um, so you'll see some glitches in this, and also what you just... You might It's kind of subtle, you might not have seen it. Sp uh, two enemies were supposed to spawn in that tunnel that Spicy just ran through, but they didn't. For some reason, if you jump off the very far left corner of where Spicy jumped down onto the bridge, they just don't spawn. Um, there are some weird shenanigans in this game with Leon clipping out of bounds or clipping into areas or walls that breaks enemy AI. And you'll see it actually quite a handful of times during the run. 
um, and uh, it involves some clipping that we'll explain later when we get to it. But uh, right now we're coming up on uh, another area called the Fishing Village, which originally when we first started writing the game was very rough uh, because it also has a whole bunch of AI in it that's kind of annoying. Um, but then it has one special AI um, that you kind of saw earlier um, at the start of the game, but we'll see it again, which is the... Uh, they're called the Brutes, I think, is like their actual name. Um, which is a, a big hammer cow guy, uh, which is the best way I could really explain it. And um, they themselves, are, you can they're, you can handle them because their AI can be a little bit predictable. Um, and you have dodge prompts on That's this fella right here. He kind of sleeps a little bit. However, uh, they can one-shot you uh, easily, very, very easily. Like, they hit incredibly, incredibly hard. Um, so it's it's very important that you don't get touched by them. So in this whole sequence here, Spicy is kind of has the whole thing, the the enemy, the the cow, and all these enemies chasing him. Uh, he needs to get in here and get this fuel so he can bring it back to the boat. Um, the problem is, is the cow guy is also following. So it's important that he gets up the ladder before cow dude uh, destroys him. Yeah. So that that's the dodge prompt we're talking about. If Spicy had not dodged, uh, he would be back at the merchant running through here again. Oh. Hold on. Where is this nade at in here, Trey? I want to grab it, actually. It's in the shack to the right. Like, is right it just now. on the just thing? Is right. it on a box? Yeah, it's right it, on the it's thing. It's right, right on the thing. Go straight. It's right there. I want to be able to nade the lady in cabin. Yeah. yeah. Real time routing. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Good to have two bad. other... Runners on the commentary as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, you know, the three of us here have done a lot of routing for this. A lot of the routes and stuff that you see does actually come from a lot of us um, and also a lot of other key runners in the scene. Um, but enough of that. Now we got uh, Del Lago. Yeah. A good old lake monster. Yeah. So here we're gonna be going 60 FPS on purpose because this actually makes the waves less like animated and uh, that makes it so that your harpoons are a lot easier to hit uh, in this fight actually. And there's also another like fast shooting technique we're doing basically whenever we're throwing in harpoon we're letting go of the aim which makes Leon sit back down and it actually allows us to like shoot faster when we let Leon sit down after every shot and uh, the idea here is to get one cycle because if you don't every time and the, the Lago like charges at you and if you don't like manage to kill the Lago before that um, it regenerates more health back it's like set value so the idea is to try to kill this boss in one cycle Think you can swallow me whole, huh? so hopefully the boss will die somewhere here before he finishes the charge. Ooh, there we I go. Through that one short, I got scared. I, I saw <laughs> yeah. that the second to last one I hit the water, and it's such a sinking feeling when you see that happen. But nice, good, <laughs> good, good save on that one. Yeah, Del Lago is like uh, when we were first riding him, we discovered that his HP resets every time he dives. Uh, it's it's it was very hard to like deal with because um, the the two cycle is actually harder. Then the one cycle. And then if you manage to get to the third cycle, it takes like an extra two minutes because he does a like an HP lock where he will not die until he comes out of the third cycle. It's, it's really not fun, but Spicy's a pro gamer and he got it in one cycle, so we're all good there. Yeah, you only can hit like, miss like two or three harpoons in total if you want to go for the one cycle and you have to like constantly be doing like the fast throwing technique as well. So, uh, before we actually knew the fast throwing technique, I think you were able to like miss one harpoon. That was like the only yeah. leeway you had to get the one cycle. It was one very rough. But... One cycling without the fast throwing was really bad. It would have been like a, a pretty big reset point before the fast throwing was found. Some kind of mm. yeah. and back when we were doing it on 120 FPS made it even worse. Yeah. With the waves, yeah. the tsunamis, it was really really hard to hit them. Yeah, the issues with the waves is like. The waves are like bigger, 120 FPS, and if your like harpoon even touches the water even tiny bit, it just swallows the whole harpoon and doesn't hit the, the lago. So 
Yeah, which is not how harpoons work, in case you're wondering, by the way. They're kind of designed to go through water and hit things. That's like the whole point of a harpoon. <laughs> Use yes. a gun at that point, I guess. So in this chapter, uh, we have the boat. There's a few areas we're going to go through to get some extra treasure and a uh, and, uh, golden egg. Because that is totally not going to be important later on, surprisingly. Let's not spoil it, let's save it. Yeah, yeah I'm save done. it for the moment. He's gonna eat it. It's another heal, he needs it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an important heal. Um. <clears throat> the uh, the routing for this, interestingly enough, went around a circle a lot over these last few weeks as we just tried to figure out what was optimal and what was best to do uh, for this game. And it, it's gone through a lot of changes. There's a lot of treasure in this lake and around it that we were originally picking up um to in, to ensure that we had what we needed to like do the run because when routing first starts especially for a game like this in a difficulty like this is uh, we wanted to get as much as possible and then kind of thin it from there because uh, you wanted to be able to finish runs and if you had access then you could start cutting which is kind of what we were doing so there's a lot of other places like to the right side of the lake that spicy uh that you, you he doesn't go to here but um, where like you originally saw Luis and everything uh, to get a bunch of treasure to sell for items But we've really kind of min maxed it at this point where um, We are obviously resorting to selling our healing items uh, That allows us to get money in a more optimal fashion so that we can upgrade at just the bare minimum You'll see when spicy goes to upgrade and purchase the weapon that he needs that he'll be using throughout the whole game um, It will take almost every single bit of his money because we planned it out to be that way yeah, also that money rolling has changed quite a bit compared to the original days because uh, some new skips were found, but we will talk about them when we get there. This uh, this area where Spicy's getting this next uh, key item piece, um, a lot of these enemies are pretty set for the most part in terms of their behavior, but there's one little thing at the very end of this um, that I'm hoping I'm not jinxing Spicy when I say it, that could happen. Um, but the, uh, this game, probably it's, it's, my biggest gripe with it is it's animation locking. Um, and it's worst one is with that right there, which is fire. Um, if you get lit on fire, you cannot do anything. You cannot fight, you cannot open your inventory, you can't do anything. You are stuck in a fire animation. And, uh, Spicy is going to, uh, shoot... Uh, that weapon of mass destruction out of that dude's hands because if he throws that molly right here as you unlock this door You will get molly trapped or fire trap. You can't get through the door if, even though you've unlocked it It will not open and you are stuck on fire until you die basically um, That is a very sad thing when it happens <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, happens, happens too often Yeah, we've been going around the lake here uh, while loading a little bit of treasure and heal items to be sold. Uh, we got a couple of these head pieces which we're using here to get the insignia that is opens up the way to the church where we have intel that the president's daughter is. Yeah, we're keeping our first merchant stop here. Make sure I combine that last one. And as Zeke said, the money routing is pretty tight, so I should have enough with this money routing. This money routing for this route has been pretty safe for the most part. As long as I didn't miss anything, I don't think I did. And then we'll have our first We're boss to fight. find out. Yeah. There's also a treasure mechanic in this game where putting gems inside of treasures can uh, increase the how much they sell for. Um, so that mass of spicy to spy can hold gems. It's gonna be three of the same color in there. You can see it gets a multiplier bonus there at the bottom, depending on how you gem it. Um, that'll play a pretty big part later in the run, and also does now in like how much money you get. So he's sell spicy selling a bunch of stuff: his shotgun, his heels, uh, the treasures he picked up. He's gonna buy the sniper here and its scope, and he's gonna power it up once he does this. He's gonna want to do four power. Uh, and then he's gonna do three on ammo capacity and two in the reload speed. Um, basically, this is setting up the rifle to be basically perfect for what we need it for for the entire game. Uh, it's going to do a lot for a while. This thing was is very, very powerful. And it specifically is going to help with this boss fight coming up, um, which was in the original. This is going to be 
uh, Higante, uh, which is obviously the very big, big boy, as uh, uh, Leon calls him. And in this fight, I uh, actually had a strat that was made very early on that has lasted until uh, now. It's still used. That's the fastest strat, so shout out to Demented Solid for it. Um, where when Spicy starts his fight, essentially he's going to dump shots into Higante's head. Uh, it should take about four until Higante exposes its weak point, which is the Plagas that'll come out of its back. Um, and then when he does this, Spicy's gonna hit two shots on it until he drops to his knees and hits two more. Uh, this will then give Spicy time to reload while Higante stands up. And Spicy's gonna cancel his reload when he's at seven and throw a nade at him to stagger him. He's gonna do a few, another shot in his head, which crit, which was nice, exposed the weak point early. He's gonna dump more shots to it until he dies. Hopefully he dies here. Perfect. God damn. Perfect. Easy. That, that sniper crit was actually kind of insane on his head. It saves so okay. much ammo when you get it. Let's get to that. Yeah. So every weapon in this game has a slight chance to crit. And on top of that, the uh, hunting rifle specifically does three times the damage on uh, weak points. So uh, um, if you crit on a weak point, it can make the fight so much faster all of a sudden. But yeah, that's a really clean fight. Well done. Thank you. We actually got crazy right flame RNG as well. Actually, might not have the craft for Kevin. We'll see though. Surely, you guys, you can all trust that this is exactly how well it goes on every run. <laughs> and that we always get the ammo we need. Higante always gets crit and dies very easily. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the game's got to give some back after I got red misted. Yeah, that's actually yeah, yeah. That's true. It's the DA drop. Yeah, crazy DA, but if you did there, it's <laughs> insane. Yeah. I guess a lot of the DA, I guess, quickly was mentioned there. So a lot of party games, there's like the, the dynamic difficulty system. Um, in some difficulties, it's locked. Uh, it kind of changes depending on how you do in the game, how much you kill enemies and all that but in this there is two like difficulty ranks technically but the difference is very minimal so we don't really at least in current routing worry about the difficult dynamic difficulty or manipulate it in any way thankfully that's for the better yeah having to uh, manipulate your da is not fun in any re game um, so it's good that, you know, it's static. We don't have to account for routing for whether or not you're at DA rank 11 or 10. Um, so that is good. But I mean, that's, that's the end of chapter four. And now we've, we met Ashley, uh, on this chapter. So surely things get better now that we have Ashley, right guys? Like everything's mm -hmm. much easier now. All right. Surely. <laughs> Extremely. Get the letter. Uh, yeah. With, with Ashley in this game, um, her AI is, it isn't the worst AI. Uh, it's pretty responsive in certain situations, but however, it sometimes just doesn't. And that's the, basically the best way I can explain it is actually just doesn't sometimes. Uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Doesn't go where she needs to go. Um, so you'll see, hopefully we don't have to deal with too much of that, but we're gonna do the first sniper clip. Uh, the sniper, when you're zoomed in, pushes Leon into places he shouldn't be. Like, it pushes him really far back, including into walls. So what you just saw, Spicy clipped into a wall and jumped down a, a ladder prompt. And what that basically did is it skipped him back to the bottom floor, which skipped him going up and triggering a cutscene with Ashley, which would have made her follow him outside the back all the way around here, um, which is what we had to do when we were first routing. The reason why this is super important is that Ashley cannot get grabbed now. Like, she's basically eliminated from the game until you get to uh, the next area, which is Cabin. Um, very, very helpful, because Ashley just gets grabbed here all the time. Like, when you were running through here, she would always get grabbed, and it was not fun. Yeah, Ashley's just chilling at the church, wondering where Leon has gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can still see her dialogue pop up. She's like, hey, where are you going? She'll see, you'll see it randomly pop up from time to time. Or she'll yeah. be like, wait for me, and we're just not doing any of that. Yeah, there it is. Where are you, where are you going? You're fine, Ashley. He'll uh, magically appear soon. Those are the two enemies Spicy mentioned at the start of the game. That's why he broke that window up there. They uh, didn't aggro early, so that guy right there didn't insta-grab Spicy when he came through here. 
been funny enough, he can insta grab you, but it's obviously the game just trolling you at that point. Yeah. <laughs> had, had, had that happened to me just yesterday, I think. He can camp the door and yoink you off of it, it's kind of annoying. Yeah. Hopefully, this guy just doesn't kick Spicy. Oh, oh. Never mind. Yeah. Spicy broke his ankles. <laughs> I'm so scared running past that guy. We're gonna go a little bit out of the way here to make a safety save for Cabin, because it is Cabin. Yeah, Cabin can troll quite a bit. Um, this Cabin section itself can be progressed in a few ways. Uh, we originally did this by doing a lot of kills, but you can also progress this first phase by boarding up all the windows, so that's what we set up on, because that makes the whole cabin sequence a lot less hectic, because if you board up all the windows, there's a lot of enemies for the next few phases of the cabin. You kind of figure out finally uh, how to, what enemies usually drop the boards, and we kind of have a new tech here, hopefully it works out, that guarantees us a board drop from the third board drop that we need. Nice. And there we go, we got all the three boards here. We can board up all the windows, which progress, uh, progresses the first phase here. Every time you do the... You know when you're done, when the, you hear somebody drop down from the chimney. Then after that, it's like 10 seconds until the next cutscene starts. And for the next bit, when the cutscene happens, we have to kill five enemies or... Uh, Root to spawn. And we're just waiting for the cutscene to happen here. So that'll take Spicy five kills to progress until the the brute is triggered. What that guy just was floated. that? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so Spicy's trying to net five kills here. And when, when Spicy shoots something in the head and its head doesn't explode, it means it's going to turn into a plaga. So you see Spicy run up and stab them, so that doesn't happen because they are very hard to control when that happens. Yeah. So here's the He's here's the boy. Out. Sorry, that's unlucky. Yeah. Yeah. This bull should four. die. Four headshots. Oh, we have Shovel Knight. Oh. We get bonked. That's fine. Uh, there's so many enemies here for some reason. Oh, Shovel Knight caught a stray. And with that bull kill, uh, that should trigger uh, the end of the cabin here. Well done. Clean ca cleanish cabin. That was true. pretty scary. <laughs> I hate when he yeah. roars outside the window because that means usually he's going to do an attack right when he jumps in. But if he roars when he jumps in, it's like really free to kill him. What's, what's gonna happen? Yeah, the uh, shovel guy there is probably the biggest threat in that entire cabin is when the shovel dude shows up, he covers so much of the arena by swinging the shovel. It's actually really hard to avoid. But it's also really funny when you get hit because it makes this really <laughs> comedic, like, like ping. Like, right when you get Bonk. hit. Yeah, it's like, it's really funny. But you're also so mad because it actually does, like, your whole health bar. Yeah, that will always knock you off your feet. And just a long animation to stand up again and all that. But yeah, here, uh, in, sometimes in the store, there's some items that are on sale. And uh, in this particular store, uh, you can get a cheaper inventory upgrade, a uh, cheaper flash recipe crafting. And then we also buy a shotgun that we'll be using in the whole run. Because it's a pretty good shotgun even without any upgrades. We've got company. Yeah, the riot gun is pretty insane. Um, in, in this section, uh, Spicy's gonna do two stealth kills, because this is like a little valley that gets alerted if you, if you trigger anyone, a whole bunch of enemies start spawning, and it is impossible to get through. Uh, Spicy's gonna stealth kill two, and he's gonna go grab this yellow diamond up here. Uh, the way this area is basically gonna be done is he's gonna run down here, uh, he's gonna grab, um, this large resource here, which he's, we're gonna want, and he's gonna throw a flash down the valley to get everything to just get still and be flashed basically so we can run through with Ashley for free. If you don't do that, a brute will spawn or the brute is already spawned but he's kind of AFK oh. back there. Oh goodness. I'm just going to reload. I have no idea what happened. I don't know yeah. how she's back there. 
I think you got it's... stuck on the enemies that went to the wall. Yeah. Unluckily, we have Ashley is back with us. He's not at the church anymore, so <laughs> yeah. uh, it can make uh, some interesting issues happening here. Yeah, Ashley's AI will get stuck on objects and enemies very easily. So what yeah. can happen is when you flash this valley, <clears throat> some enemies will like be blinded and they'll walk into a wall where you ran. So Ashley will get stuck on them between you, between like uh, you and her. So she'll get stuck there. And then when they become unflashed, they just instantly grab her. That dude stepped in a trap somehow on his own. I think she's with me this time. Yeah. Yeah, she made it. Well done, Ashley. Good job. I There's like a... it or yeah. Go ahead. I was just no, about to say, you. like, yeah, I was just about to say, uh, like in the original, Ashley, you cannot tell Ashley to wait at all. Ashley will always be following you, but there's like two modes. You can tell Ashley to follow closely behind you or like in a distance mode. But uh, we kind of use a little bit sometimes here and there to manipulate Ashley in that way. But yeah, it's still kind of early in the run. We sure, don't know. Cool. A lot of like useful manipulations with that yet. It'd be yeah. so much easier if we could just tell Ashley to wait somewhere far away or we just do the sections on our own, but Yeah, there is a there is a little exploit that we abuse where if Ashley is in an area and we leave that area, if we break combat, the enemies also will break combat and they won't grab Ashley even though she's back there. So you'll see us use that quite a bit. It'll happen also here uh, after especially does the Bella Sisters. So Spicy's gonna try to kill the sister on the right in the green dress as fast as he can, because that's the one that has the checkpoint crank that we need. Uh, he's gonna kick... Oh, that's uh, unlucky. So the, what Spicy's trying to do is kick her to get a knife stab on her uh, while avoiding this other Bella sister. Um, it's kind of a pain, because enemies will start to flood the room. The other one is almost dead. So now that she's dead, we have to wait for the item to drop and everyone just starts turboing into the room and you have to avoid this other Bella sister that's chasing you too. Uh, now that we're out of the house, Spicy basically has to get towards the door we need to crank open, but he's got a time of flash that will buy him enough time to do it. Uh, this, is, this whole area can be kind of sketchy because now Ashley's going to come out of the locker that Spicy put her in. Um, we and the enemy should be avoiding her or should not be really touching her because they're flashed and they're aggroed onto spicy not actually onto Ashley if done correctly this means that Ashley will run past all the flashed enemies while spicy leaves the area at the same time spicy has left combat which means the enemies in the area are no longer aggroed to anything and Ashley should just magically get to come behind him for free which is exactly what happened that nice. kick not putting her on the wall was so unlucky I don't know why that happens sometimes but yeah, that was kind of crazy. But what Spicy was trying to do is uh, kick her guts wall and then stab her, which deletes their health bar. Uh, when you get like a stealth kill or an execution stab on on enemies like the Bella sisters. Um, though that didn't happen, he got out for free. But this is the Mendez chase also. This area is pretty scripted. Mendez is slowly walking behind him. Um, we just have to run up here and get across this bridge before, uh, before Mendez catches up. It's pretty... That was close. Yeah. If Ashley gets dropped at all, it's unfortunate. You die. The run dies right there, basically, if we were doing, like, PB attempts. But not too bad. You got through it. Easy peasy. What about you? I'll do my job. So here we're... Uh, normally would be doing the Mendez fight. Uh, but we have found a way to just walk by. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game Thanks is very Thanks to the broken. merchant. It's, yeah, it's surprisingly a lot broken than a lot of other RE, like new RE games in general. Um, yeah. And there's, and there's Mendes. Mendes just chilling, <laughs> having up. a good time. So yeah, this game, uh, unlike other RE games, other RE games, uh, recent ones have been like very, very trigger heavy, and skips just haven't really been possible uh, too much. But for some reason, this game it just hasn't followed that rule, and this game has very, very few triggers that are actually required. You'll see a lot more skips because of that. All right, Ashley. Luis just said. I got it. 
Yeah. Yeah. But now we're at Castle. So far, things are going actually very, very well. Uh, the thing about this game is it kind of always, it keeps picking up tempo. It never really slows down too much. Um, it starts to get really hectic here at Castle because now things start to kind of have to put up with Ashley a little bit more. And when he comes to Castle, we have this funny little thing called uh, Water Hall. And we have the entry to Castle here, which involves catapults. Um, and which are just so not fun to deal with for the most part, but we have some strats in place that allow us to get around them, uh, and utilizing, like letting Ashley get taken so that we can actually not worry about her and we can flash her out. Um, there's a lot of different strats that can be used here. You'll see, I'm not sure exactly which one Spice he's gonna use, but I'm assuming he's going to shoot this, uh, yeah, this right here to release the cannon early. What this does is it lets the cannon be ready for you when you get up there. However, it spawns all the enemies that we're going to spawn when you originally set that off. Um, what we do with this is Spicy's going to loop around to get up towards the cannon and blow up these barrels that are near some catapults. This is going to stop them from destroying him and Ashley because these catapults uh, will put Ashley down and they'll take Leon down to 0 HP or 1 HP mostly. Um, so you'll see Spicy running around, kind of avoiding them and taking out enemies that run in front of him. He just needs to get to this cannon as fast as possible so that he can blow open the door. Uh, and then he can just run for the castle door. Even if Ashley gets picked up, it's fine. So the idea is that you can shoot her, shoot the uh, enemy carrying her to release her, or you can throw a flash. Um, and then if, as long as you get into the castle, all the enemies will de-aggro and you can avoid it. This is where it gets scary because the catapult is now launching directly like near Spicy, and all these enemies have torches, and they're ignoring Spicy, which is actually not super common, so that's good. Ashley gets picked up, and there's the flash that will basically drop her. Spicy's gonna book it to get into the castle as soon as possible before the enemies become unflashed uh, and pick her back up. Uh, unfortunate. This can happen sometimes. Yeah, it's really, yeah. really unlucky. That was a clean shot. My Ashley grab oh, RNG no. is so bad this run. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley's trolling. Is that your last rifle shot, too? Yeah, to I'm gonna have to cut it. Yeah. I got something new for you. Thank you. So yeah, here another uh, we find the magnum early here because it's on sale, and we also get the magnum crafting recipe for free here. Did you sell your last comes. diamond there? Uh, no, I had an extra one because I picked up okay, the extra okay. one just to make sure I have enough money. Okay. okay. Here it comes in uh, a little bit fight sequence because there's a lot, a lot of enemies you have to manage to nail. Uh, let's skip really quickly here. Oh, oh I actually didn't get freed. I'm gonna reload. There's no way. Yeah, I, mean, I don't that's... know how she didn't get un didn't get freed by the flash. He might have been around the pillar. Yeah. This part can be tricky because if the enemies carry actually around a pillar when Spicy throws this flash, it, they won't drop her, and you can't really save her after you do the clip because they'll just be too far down the stairs. When uh, Spicy's trying to do is get up into the store and clip around it to skip basically having to do a whole bunch of stuff, including a guard or a fight. Yeah. These guys are turbo like crazy, yeah. man. She might get grabbed here, but if I get through fast enough, I'll be able to save. Yeah. The idea here is to try to clip through this door. Avoiding this. Oh, unfortunate. Yeah, these clips are still. Well, we kind of know the idea how to do them. They're very easy to mess. Like, they're very precise to get clipped through these doors. Um, and yeah, the problematic part here is there's a lot of enemies. So if you're you have like two or three chances of trying it, and if you don't get it, then. Uh, yeah, the enemies are on you. That's a good flash. There we go. There we go. First now try. once we're <laughs> first try, yeah. Now that we're on this side, that all the enemies as well completely ignore Ashley, and we're heading for the water hall. The next really oh, fun the part. the lovely water hall. Yeah. This run is just full of fun parts, isn't it? No. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the run is amazingly fun. But yeah, this is another very, very difficult part. Uh, the whole premise of this is you have to go down below here where all these enemies are spawning, grab a crank and come back up and grab it and use the crank essentially to go up to the next level of water hall. Uh, the, the problem with this is there are actually just so many enemies and you have to bring Ash along with you. Now, this area used to be actually significantly worse. We've kind of figured out a, a method to it that utilizes three flashbangs um, because flashbangs really carry us during this part. This dude is turboing like oh. crazy right now. Uh, thankfully, we didn't get too bad. Uh, so Spice is going to throw a flash basically to get around to the crank uh, and use it. Um, this will give him time to get him and Ashley upstairs. If Ashley gets grabbed here, it's actually not the worst because we're going to throw more flashes, which will which will get her to drop. This oh, this what? RNG is just... I've never even oh, seen this guy before. I don't yeah. even know. These guys just didn't get flushed or something. Yeah, I've never seen a dude throwing axes here. What is happening? Yeah, this is... <laughs> this is Marathon crazy. look for sure. Holy... There's also archers around the whole room, which these are all phase clan archers. They rarely miss. Uh, they hit like crazy, and it's they especially hit Ashley a lot too. Uh, so you saw Sexy throw a flash there, just give him time to get this uh, crank turned, and he's gonna throw another and get Ooh. himself up the stairs. If Ash doesn't get up the stairs, it's not the end of the world. She will follow him after he breaks combat, unless that happens. Uh, we can still save this. So if, if you're up here and you save Ashley, they will start ignoring Ashley again. So it's a bit slower, obviously, but Ashley should be fine on her own to come back here. Ashley? Just have to wait a bit longer. Come on. Okay. Ashley. This is the part where Waterhall kind of becomes a bit more tame. Uh, since a lot of this now is all scripted, we know where enemies are and what they're going to do for the most part and where they're going to spawn. So a bunch of four enemies are going to spawn up top and kind of pursue Ashley here while... Uh, Leon spins this, or rather Spicy spins this, uh, crank, and she does her crank up there. Spicy's gonna use, uh, his pistol to take out a couple of them before switching to a sniper to save ammo. Nice crit. Uh, the whole idea here is he's gonna kill these four, and there's gonna be three more that are gonna spawn after that he'll kill, and then two more after that that are, that sprints after actually that he'll kill. At the same time this is happening, some are gonna spawn now on his level, uh, which are a couple axe throwing boys. Uh, that you can mostly avoid, right. uh, but they can be very risky. I'm uh, if they catch you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm lagging. <laughs> He's lagging. Oh. That was the pistol. I'm lagging. Yes. <laughs> the sequence is very rough. If you I'm like... lagging. <laughs> He's gonna get grubbed. Yeah. The sequence can get very rough if Ashley gets scrapped at all. Uh, you might have to deal or not with another enemy. I maybe. probably will now. Yeah. It would be out of the door near her, I think is where it spawns if it did. No, it doesn't look like it, luckily. There is some RG to these enemies spawning uh, out of that door near Ashley. There's someone there, but it might be fine. Shoot the enemies, yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't kill these guys down here, another wave of them usually won't spawn. So that's why it's actually just juking them instead of killing them. And now he just has to get far enough away so Ashley uh, does not get grabbed so he's out of combat. I mean, yeah, other than the lag, that was a really good water haul, I'd say. That was oh, like some okay. very strange RNG in the first part that I've never seen. Like that shield yeah. guy just running up to me and throwing an axe. I've never seen that before. Come on! I think I have a friend following you. Oh yeah, we have a pet. Oh, uh, this is the very funny bug. <laughs> <like, laughs> this, <Yeah. is> <laughs> this is our new. This is the new Ashley. Where'd he go? Yeah. Wait, where? Where? Oh, he's there. He's there. Oh, okay. he like, I thought he clipped out a bounce for a second. Yeah, it's the new Ashley. He's better at following you than Ashley is, actually. Oh, no, I actually need these boxes. Never mind. <laughs> Go home, buddy. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> that is very mean. Very mean. He's just vibing, man. But you can kind of see how the game kind of elevates as you get to Castle. Like, Water Hall is like an incredible pace pickup. Um, from what it was already a very like 
pace heavy game um and it only keeps going up as you get to island and towards the end of the game um so you'll see a lot of stuff that's kind of similar to what you just saw where there's a lot of enemies to be dealt with and you have to kind of be creative about how you go about saving the room stopping ashley from getting bonked every two seconds uh which is essentially the whole gimmick of resident evil 4 is just don't let the dumb npc die I need the ammo pretty oh, yeah. bad. Yeah. In general, the drops we want from boxes is always gonna be ammo. And if you get money, the money is so, so little that it's not very useful. But here at the end of the day, glory, a lot of room. And uh, we're gonna be trying to utilize a lot of this. Oh, interesting. I'll do the other strut. Yeah. So we try to utilize these explosives to uh, make deal with this Gloria Las Plagas dude because he has a lantern we need to exit out of this room. I need him to stop there. Yeah. This AI has been like scripted to run away a lot so it's a nice backup reaction because that one dude was early on like blocking an explosive barrel we normally would want to explode but Thought you were gonna throw that dude into the explosive barrel, and I wasn't sure if that was gonna blow it up or not. <laughs> I was actually really wondering what would happen there. You see yeah. my, my sniper under? I, I should have mentioned at the beginning, we are using a mod that gives me Wesker's outfit, but there's a little bug where my guns will be floating under me sometimes. I see. Huh. Um, the RNG that was kind of talked about earlier and like how this game has so much of it, um, it isn't really like puzzle RNG or like boss RNG. It's really just the enemy AI RNG and how incredibly complex it can just be because you just never know what it's going to do. You can't really ever account for it. And like that room Spicy was just in, the an enemy stood in front of a barrel that was crucial to making that original Strat Spicy going to do work. It just stood there and it just didn't move. Uh... We can't account for that. We don't know what they're going to do, when they're going to grab, when they're going to lunge, if they're just going to sleep, if they're not going to sleep. It's really, really, really hard to ever tell. So there's a lot of adapting that's required to run this um, professional. Uh, it's because you just have to be ready for AI to do whatever they want, whenever they want. Here yeah, we're interested in you. Enemy type. There's little crawlers that attach into an enemies to make them go crazy. And wait, what? Hit you there? Interesting. I don't know what's going on this run, man. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, the cave is just... <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh my god, I don't know what. <laughs> so many random hits from spots that usually don't happen. It's actually insane. This is an uh, interesting sequence where you have to just kind of try to be fast to hopefully not get memed by any enemies here. So I had to choose the one place to walk into. Yeah. Spice is going to do a shot here uh, to open up this gate uh, in out of sequence uh, to just pop that open. You can kind of clip the little uh, wait, so you can see right here, he's going to shoot directly on one uh, through the doors. Uh, this one he's about to do up here is actually going to be done with a grenade um, to throw through it. Uh, yeah, the the arc of these grenades is not accurate at all. So it'll look like it goes through, but it doesn't. Basically, that skipped having to go up and around and re-hit the triggers of the doors, um, which is actually going to have a door opened up prematurely as he comes through it over here. Um, Spicy's also gonna not stop to dodge this uh, Gigante that's throwing rubble at him. Sometimes he can RNG throw faster. We really hope he doesn't do that here. Ooh, that was close. That was really close, <laughs> yeah. If you get hit there, you lose like your whole health bar. You don't die if you have enough health, but it is still very sad when it happens. You have to be like close to full health or maybe even full health to survive that hit if he sometimes manages to toss that rubble on you. Yeah. You saw Spicy uh, like wait a second there before climbing that ladder because enemies will jump down while you're climbing the ladder and it will just push Leon off the ladder. Get ready. We will just quickly shoot the cannon before the rubble hits us and... Only one of those guys died. That's not good for my ammo situation. 
Open for traffic. Actually, I have a bunch of extra nudes right now. Oh, this shoots me right. No. Sorry, I've had my. And the fact that you even said that is like so astonishing to me that you would even dare <laughs> tempt the gods like that after what's been happening this run. Yeah. I do just take it the second cannon kind of shot, just like. <laughs> it's just to be safe. Yeah. Just to be safe. Now that's the shortest, second shortest chapter of the game right there, which is chapter eight. Uh, it's about five minutes long, five and a half minutes long. Uh, it's a pretty good chapter for the most part, but it can be very volatile with like those those castle skips because if those grenades miss, it can be, it can be really hard to recover. But uh, it was pretty well done. But now we're in the maze, uh, and the maze is actually. It's interesting. It's not incredibly hard, but there there's elements to it that make it kind of annoying to deal with. Um, basically, the whole idea of, of the maze here is we have to go around and hit these uh, hit these levers, which will open up the door. Uh, as we progress here, there are some dogs. Um, as you can see, uh, they die pretty easily, but they kind of hurt a lot. Uh, so the whole idea is to get around without dying. I was basically going to hit a collateral shot on these two to avoid that breaking open, because if it does, one of them will turn into a Plagueis, and we just don't want that problem. Uh, a lot of these spawns are set, so we're killing specific dogs that will allow us to get through here without them ever coming out at us. Um, there are some that are going to show up by default, because nothing can really do about it. But with the way that Spicy's handling it right now, the idea is to keep them from coming randomly behind him and showing up to hit Ashley, because the dogs can pin Ashley down, and you're on a timer to get them off. If you don't, you'll die, you'll game over. Um, so there's a little bit of trickiness to that, uh, as well as like a, a sequence that happens on the very last uh, uh, lever. Yeah, again, if Ashley wasn't there, this could be pretty easily just run by, but yeah, the dogs are just very good at hopping on Ashley, and then Ashley dies, and yeah, back to the beginning. So it's just, for now, it's a lot safer to deal with all the dogs. This grenade hopefully kills all of them. No, one of the dogs survived. Yeah. Hold this down. Very okay. concerning. I haven't gotten a heavy nade yet because I had to craft extra rifle ammo, so I'm actually down on gunpowder already. Yeah. Heavy nade uh, drops are typically get pick up on the when you walk into the next part, though, for the most part. Yeah. There's um uh, a sequence here that's about to start when Spicy pulls this lever. Basically, when he jumps down here, uh, or he's about to jump down from here, a, a wave of enemies is going to spawn. It's about four enemies, technically, but only three of them matter. It's these three that run through here. Uh, Spicy needs to kill these three um, as fast as he can and hit this next lever uh, so that he can essentially get through the gate. But, oh, there's actually a new strap for this that Spicy's doing, um, where he'll hit this lever, and he's going to go up the stairs uh, to get ready to go into the castle. You can't go in while these guys are alive because there's a trigger active that if you do that, even though Ashley's not been picked up, she'll just die. She'll get kidnapped. Um, so what Spicy's going to do is he's actually going to go up the stairs and line up as Ashley gets picked up here. And he's going to throw a flash when the enemy carries her around a certain uh, area. Uh, you see he's going to kind of line up and wait. And when we know that the flash is going to flash it, drops her and you can enter in and all the enemies are going to de-aggro. Like I said, we're going to abuse that a lot. And that's actually an, uh, a really good strat because it saves a lot of time. Otherwise, you'd have to kill them, and Ashley just kind of zooms to you super fast when you do that, too. Yeah, you cannot be too quick with the uh, flash there, because uh, there's like an area if Ashley is grabbed, or like in grabbed state, and you flash. Or basically, I think it's just if Ashley is in an area there, and even if she's technically safe there, and you enter the castle doors, it will game over regardless. So you have to wait the enemies to carry Ashley a bit further in, out of the trigger area. Uh, that's why we wait there a little bit with the flash. Here's another skip here. We'll be tossing a grenade before an enemy comes behind the corner. Pull a lever that would lower the bridge. So this also has to directly grab this mask here, or the head. Uh, saving us a lot of time, because there's a lot of enemies that we would have to deal otherwise. And run around a lot. Without a flash, this room can be very, very annoying because these enemies spawn here and the Glorialis Plagas dude in the red robe will basically stun Ashley anytime he starts doing it. Uh, 
So all the enemies will also be there, and they'll just pick her up, and it makes that room a lot more difficult. So that's why we throw a flash there. Two heavy nade drops here is actually so unbelievably yeah, blessed, no uh, and very good. Uh, heavy grenades are incredibly important here in the castle, and getting them to drop organically is way, way better than ever crafting them, uh, because they cost a lot of gunpowder to craft. It's like insane. Uh, so we want to avoid having to craft as many as we can, but we need a certain amount through the run. But Spicy just got two, so that's good. We also want Magnum Ammo Drops uh, to allow for stress later in the game to work appropriately. So uh, we are just hoping for a little bit of RNG uh, that usually isn't too inconsistent. But now we're, uh, we're going to do the the night section. Oh, the nights. So I guess the idea here is to obviously just deal with the knights ASAP. Um, it's like one rifle and pistol shot to knock him down. Oh, the double. That's it. Perfect parry in these knights is... Uh, can be risky because obviously you trade health if you miss the perfect parry, but... So Ashley will try to help actually in this section. Every time an enemy will swing at you, um, Ashley will counter the enemy's swing with like these blue flame lanterns and that will actually freeze the knights. So you can also alternatively use that kind of for like a safer play. For example here, if the enemy misses, uh, Ashley will follow up with the throw on the enemy. And you can actually bait all of them into this blue flame and just kick them out to expose the plugas. Kill them quicker. That kick just not exposed that other one's pockets. It did not. No. I've never seen that happen before. Oh, this. I think the other enemy kind of like knocked him back and backwards, and that's why it like looked like he hit him, but actually did not directly hit the kick. It's also a cool bug for some reason in this area. The pockets don't take damage when you shoot them sometimes. Yeah. And I got that twice uh, there. So I think the Plagas actually have like a hitbox in the front that takes more damage. So if somehow the sniper hits a bit to the side, they don't take full damage. That so there's like a, there is the face area where you have to hit the Plagas where it takes full damage. If you there shoot is. them from behind, they actually don't like, you have to shoot them like three times compared to like one shot to the front with the yeah. current rifle here. So. Mm. There's like a spot on their back that just takes no damage too. It's kind of weird the way they made it, but uh, at least you didn't die, and that's what matters. <laughs> so that's good. Dying on the knights is really rough because the whole sequence back is kind of annoying. My heal situation isn't super good now after that, but huh. a dining hall Eat should be okay. No thanks. As long as we don't get annihilated in Novus. Like I don't know why you would out. say that. Yeah, why would you say that? Novies are free. Novies are free. Just do what they do in the OG, just like kind of like look to the side. That kind of, kind of works for them sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Just don't look at them. Sometimes. Up. Make another safety save here. Why not On the very low chance that I die in the Ashley section somehow. Yeah. And that's the, yeah, we, unlike the original game, yeah, I guess I mentioned that, but we don't get a lot of saves, so it's just, for safety, it's just better for marathon purposes to do a lot of safety saves in some of these sections, because one hit can just end there, since you backwards a lot, so. Yeah. Now with the Ashley section, um, luckily, uh, this section kind of just, if you know the puzzle solutions, you can like skip half of it, making this section a lot shorter. So, yeah, we were actually very surprised to see that when we were first started writing this game. This is like the very first thing me and Spicy actually discovered that was that this puzzle solution was just worked the same. You got to skip the whole area, which is very uncharacteristic um, in terms of like these types of areas for Capcom in their games. Is usually they'll make the like a solution like this where you're supposed to skip to the end, RNG depending on. An area or it'll change if you try to guess it early as like it does in like re7 um 
so we were surprised to see that uh, this solution was just the same and you got to skip basically the entirety uh, or majority of the Ashley section, which I mean, we're not complaining. Like it's, it's nice. But they've just included a lot of really cool, like optional ways to kind of bypass sections that are like indebted even, which is very cool for replayability as well. Like you have options to just skip areas if you just don't want to do them right. Very cool. Yeah, it's definitely super nice. In this area with the knights, uh, as Ashley, um, a lot of the behavior of the knights is like pretty scripted and what we're going to know we're going to do. This lantern Ashley has is pretty OP. It stuns them instantly and for a very long time. Uh, the only rough part about this area is that uh, Ashley gets one shot. You cannot get touched by anything or you will just die instantly. Um, and because of this, dying here on a run, like an actual run, we wouldn't be really making saves. You would be set back all the way to the garden, to the maze, basically. Uh, and it's just no bueno. Uh, but thankfully, you know, with, with certain strats that we have and we are allowed to change FPS here out of section coming up, uh, makes it a bit more consistent. And really, you don't really die here unless you take, like, incorrect lines or... Um, you kind of limit test how tight you can take a line and then you get hit by a knight. No, no, don't go out. Now we just gotta exit out of here. I've had of this. Which is completely fine. Completely fine. Still waiting for the day that I just die to one of these knights in this room. This guy's just gonna hit the, yeah. the quick swipe real quick when I run by yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> so... Ideally, you should be able to kind of just take a very straight line through the room here, but who, who knows? Maybe some one time the knights just decide to like early aggro or something. It's, it's the fact that you even said that just makes me like shudder <laughs> thinking about it. Like, I get so nervous running through. I'm like, God, what if this is the run? They just like speed up for no reason. Yeah. There's a fun bug that can happen here where the knights will actually clip into this door and it'll force the elevator door back open and it gives you a heart attack when it happens. I, I've never seen that. It sounds yeah. terrifying. It happened to me today. <laughs> uh, oh, but we're going to go 30 FPS here. This is an RE engine classic technical move where we move our FPS down to 30, which somehow breaks the game. Uh, we only do it in certain parts that we're allowed to as, as per the rules um, to make certain areas that would otherwise be very hard to deal with a bit more bearable, like that night there. At 120, you can clip past him. It's not really that consistent, and if you mess it up, you just die and you go back to the start of the chapter. Uh, so 30 FPS there makes it so we can just hold W and just clip on past him. It kind of makes our lives a little bit easier. And that is the Ashley section. Nice. Now we move on to more scary parts. This whole like middle yeah. section of the run is pretty brutal. From basically back. just all of Castle, honestly. Same as ever. Just back to back to back scary parts. Um. I have some new welcome. I got something new. This is another merchant shop we're gonna do where we're gonna sell a bunch of things uh, and get some very important things about. that are gonna make it our lives easier. Fine. Primarily, we're going to get a recipe to let us craft big grenades, which are heavy grenades, body armor, and uh, some resources, and a lot of gunpowder. Uh, we're going to need all this stuff, um, because heavy grenades play a very big role in the run. They do insane damage. Uh, it's like 3,000, 2,000, something like that, and they have a massive blast radius, which is going to make two boss fights coming up, pseudo boss fights, a lot easier. Um, what do I mean the double guard or room? Uh, the body armor is pretty crucial throughout the rest of the game because it really s reduces the damage uh, Leon takes by quite a bit, especially to, like, ranged attacks. It's really, really good. Uh, melee attacks, it helps a lot, too. Uh, but we're coming up on another door clip here, which we're going to go right into the Nobis room. This doesn't save that much time. It saves some, but the key point to it is that it causes the Nobis on the other side of the room to not spawn right away, which makes this little area a little bit better. However, you can get grief going up the slider and get hit by a Nobi to fall off. Like that. Just like that. Just like that. Not much you can really do about it. You kind of just keep trying to go up until you can get up. Oh, boy. And... Yeah, we might 
happy I was somewhat a bit. Yeah, some kind of shit, either I wasn't yeah. sure if that was me or. All right, everyone. We just had minor technical uh, technical difficulties, but we are back and we're ready to begin the timer once uh, Spicy is ready. So feel free to count down. All right, I'll continue it in three, two, one, go. Yeah, I uh, not exactly sure where it got cut off at, but I got absolutely annihilated by every single movie going to the first lever. So I have no heals. I've never been hit by this yeah, movie this... before. This. All right, I'm gonna reload. I this is just insane. Yeah, this yeah. This is just it, insane. <laughs> Holy. Yeah, that's the room for the most part. Like you, some that you get hit sometimes. Uh, but yeah, this is like insane. How much you got hit there, and just just for safety, just barely just reload and not lose all literally all your heals. It's insane how much just you got grief there. It's. This game, unlike other RE games, was not very generous with iframes for Leon. Uh, they do not care, uh, basically, if you get hit. They will let you get hit again and then again. Uh, sometimes it does die and not being able to use the heal. So the Novis here are, are, are offenders in that department too, where you can just get hit on repeat over and over and over until you're out of heals, and then eventually you'll die. And then sometimes, like, RNG, you get up the ladder just fine like that. This is what we meant by, like, it's kind of RNG everywhere, is that certain things just work and certain things just don't sometimes. So you're pretty much telling me they perfectly recreated the Novisa doors from the original RE4. Yeah, they did a great much. job. No cut content. <laughs> they perfectly captured the speedrunning experience. <laughs> Funny enough, you can kind of do the same like camera manipulations with these two. It's not like as consistent in... I mean, I guess in the original one, you can also kind of get memed by uh, the novice, even if you do the camera manipulations, but... Do you have the last um, novice, where I had to go through every single heal and just got annihilated, and then you have that novice? Yeah, it's like... The two sides. Uh, Showing yeah. the best and worst case scenarios. Exactly. Now you guys know what it's like. Uh, so now we have double guard or uh, basically Spice is gonna shoot this armored one a couple times to get him off the wall, and he's gonna shoot this bell in a couple seconds. What he's basically doing is making sure they group up on that bell. Now he has three heavy nades that he's going to use uh, on these guard doors to basically nuke their health bars, uh, and then one regular grenade which should kill all of them. So do some looting while they die because they have pretty long death animations but that is a very fast and nice strat that was found for this room that would otherwise have been a nightmare uh to deal with because uh, these guys are fast and a little unpredictable uh but the heavy nades are just so unbelievably strong that even not even aiming at their weak point it will still destroy them so that was super super fast yeah once the first heavy nade hits they like get ruling your stun animation so you can just follow up with the rest of the grenades and yeah they just die. Unfortunately, there's no save points in this entire section from like Novi's to Garador's all the way up to this skip right here. That I'm about to do so. Yeah. So, yeah, we're about to do another skip here. We don't actually need to use sniper on this one. For some reason, this one, you kind of just need to move your camera before you interact with this crawl away. And you actually kind of cause Leon to clip inside the wall. And we can just kind of <laughs> go out of bounds through this whole section, uh, which makes life a lot easier and faster, obviously, the important part. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, this is also kind of reminiscent of uh, the OG with some of their island clips uh, where you would essentially just like let Leon climb out of bounds by just shifting his model a little bit into the climbing animation. Kind of the same premise here, where you're kind of just forcing Leon to do go into the wall. You're just kind of making it happen. So uh, it's it, that one's actually a very very nice out of bounds. You just get to skip the whole Novi walk there and go straight to the crown. 
Yeah, so we pick up the crown and uh, we've been gathering diamonds to put on the crown because the crown, if you have all five different colors, sells for 100,000. And uh, as we earlier mentioned, rocket launcher is 160,000. So uh, that basically just get this first rocket launcher right here. Magnum drops have been good to you, it looks like. I feel like I have a lot right now. Yeah. I think you have like at least like seven right now. So Spice is going to do some menuing here. He's going to send his shotgun to storage because we need the space. And he's going to drop all five colors into the crown. Because like Trey said, this is going to make for a 100k cell. Uh, very crucial to being able to get this uh, rocket launcher as well as getting uh, the TMP. Uh, the reason uh, we want the TMP as well is because it makes uh, an area in the game uh, later significantly easier uh, because of the way it, it staggers enemies. Um, this RPG is necessary for this upcoming boss fight. Uh, say fight loosely because it's not really a fight, uh, which is Verdugo. <clears throat> we handle him the same way in the remake as they do in the original, where we basically freeze him and rocket him because otherwise you would have to wait, uh, I believe it's four or five minutes, uh, running away from him or or cheesing his AI or whatever until the elevator arrives. Holy moly, <laughs> that magnum drop. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of insane. Uh, but basically, you'll see Spicy run here, trigger uh, the cutscene, and just uh, we're basically just going to be running until we get to uh, the actual boss trigger, and we're going to handle him the exact same way. We're going to freeze him, rocket him, and the fight's going to end really, really fast because uh, they made Verdugo in this uh, remake very tanky. Like, he has 55,000 health, which I believe is more than every other enemy in the game. Uh, he's insanely tanky. Uh, I believe um, that they did this uh, on purpose to either make you hide from him or make you kill him and use all your ammo. It's really rough to handle a professional. Yeah. No, all you just gotta do is not miss. Surely. Yeah, just don't miss. Spicy. Surely. No pressure. Give Ramon's lap dog. Where do you go? Hello? Nice. He's lagging. Quiet. Just like that. Fight's done. Good job. To your master. The best part about that is that, not that he dies so fast, but now there's a room Capcom put in this game meant to restock you when you kill him organically. Now we just get to loot it for everything we want. Spicy's already got an abundance of magnum ammo. Uh, what we really want is a bunch of heavy nades uh, and shotgun ammo mostly. If you can get a bunch of that, you're like you're sitting real good going into the late part of the game. And you got how much? Is that eight magnum shots? Yeah. I really yeah, that's really just plenty. Yeah. Can you some rifle ammo too? The grenades are like the important and the random rows you really want once they start dropping like I think they like start dropping in the maze level from boxes but usually the game is giving a lot of handgun ammo at the moment. Wow. And zero heavy nades. I have one of this. Yeah. It's kinda crazy because I don't even sell my handgun ammo. And I don't even have a handgun. Yeah. You did get another magnum drop there though, that's kinda funny. More handgun ammo. So the way the game prioritizes loot depending on like how much you have resources. But because in, the, in this game by default you have like case called like case that increases the amount of pistol drops you get, you will always just randomly kind of get a lot of pistol ammo drops. And, uh, we don't really have routed. Uh, well, we use the route in a different case to have like to have a lot less pistol drop ammo, but. Uh, it just was too much time loss, so now we'd have to deal with sometimes getting too much pistol ammo for no reason because we don't really need that much ever. A little hard for me. Oh, I need to make sure I have. Okay, I do have enough. Faith in someone who used to work for him. This area coming up here um, is scary for one reason only, and it is because of one Bella sister is in probably the most un amazing spot ever. Uh, this area, basically, what Spicy has to do is go get a bundle of TNT and use it on that wall. Uh, the problem is, is right when he goes to pull a lever that's coming up here, there's a, there's a Bella sister who sits there, and she is, uh, her behavior is, is RNG. It's random. Uh, if you're very unlucky, um, you can get owned just coming off the lever. Uh, 
being touched by a chainsaw is a one-shot kill, no matter what. Um, so there's there's some things you can do to prevent it. Shooting her, maybe throwing a grenade will help. Um, but we're gonna loop her and we hit this lever. She is that oh, was so close. Yeah, oh, she got the done. iframes. She's gonna yeah, fall. Literally, if that was like tiniest bit later, you would have been dead there. Sorry, must have slipped. That was a good save on that. Yeah, that was that like maybe like a like literally frames off of dying there. This is the area in the original where you would rocket launcher the boulder, uh, but in this game it's like a wall. Um, what is this guy what? doing? What is that guy what? doing? Bro, I'm seeing things that I've never seen in 200 hours of playing this cave. Like, what is going on? That guy's supposed to be in this cave. What's he doing yeah. out there? What like, is happening? Yeah, yeah, he just ran out. He's literally scripted to be in the cave. Where is he going? Is he, he was just spraying. I'm so confused. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. Oh. Uh, yeah. But yeah, just like the original, you could alternatively actually rocket launcher this ball, which we, well, Spicy has kind of been trying to route in. Um, but yeah, just for safety, we're doing a bit older and safer route here at the moment because the rocket launcher in this wall is not 100% solid. Um, strat yet. Gonna take kind of a bigger time loss to make a safety save before this next boss fight because it is not super consistent. Yeah, yeah it yeah. can easily go wrong, and then obviously you'd have to redo the whole previous room, so it's just better this way. Yeah. Again, the lack of like all the saves makes this speed running this difficulty kind of like you just have to practice everything a lot when you're actually doing like full runs and just obviously you can save in sections but uh ideally you don't want to go far away to save well. to have like backup sure once if you fail a section so I'm just an guy. but here yeah, in, in this fight there's gonna be Two El Gigantes, and we're gonna start off with two heavy grenades, and then follow up with one regular grenade. And the idea after this is to hit six magnum shots to the face. There's no armor in the chin, so hopefully we can hit all the six shots. This will kill the armored one instantly. And then we're just gonna flash the naked one in the pit. It was very good RNG on his location there. What can happen sometimes is at the start of this is that naked one will just tunnel vision on Luis and uh, make it hard to like get his attention over top the middle of the thing. And like no matter how much you shoot him, sometimes he just will ignore you and it, it can make that really slow. Uh, but thankfully he was in a good spot there. Also something can happen when you come out of that cutscene of killing the big one, uh, the armored one, is the naked one will just kick you instantly, uh, which is also super fun to deal with when that happens. Yeah, clean. Very yeah, clean. Really good. Those One thing went good in this run, finally. <laughs> hey, at least your villager went well. That's true. Yeah. That was the one part that I was like <laughs> yeah, worried about, and it went fine, and then everything else. Was... <laughs> everything else has been uh, the usual RE4R treatment. <laughs> You're not suggesting we ride this thing. Do you see any other way? <laughs> Uh, here we're gonna have the the thrill ride. One of the thrill rides of this game. Yeah, this part is pretty auto score. There's like nothing you can really do to speed it up. Uh, I think if you like lean correctly and don't let the cart tip, I think it's a little bit faster. I, I think you yeah. time if it tips, but that's a, that's about it. And even that's such a small amount of time. Yeah. In the original, you would just clip out of bounds and just run out of bounds to the end. But in here, we don't. Fortunately, have any luck so far to find anything like that, so just have to. Yeah, it'd be really cool if we could get a skip for this part. Yeah, the closest uh, I've been able to find is you can fall infinitely out of bounds, so I mean, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this game kind of has that issue, unfortunately. Like, we, we we can go out of bounds almost anywhere in the game using um, the, the sniper clipping and the typewriters. 
But the the issue is is like there's no there's like no solid ground out of bounds in this game. Very little solid ground, so you just fall. Most yeah. places. Like there's a little, little little bit testing done here, like technically the end of this chapter is kind of underneath the uh um the El Gigante fight. There's like an elevator we can get to, uh, which kind of triggers the last bit of this chapter, but you need Louis there. So even if you would be able to fall out of bounds and get somehow magically on that elevator, uh, you would need Louis there, and Louis doesn't know how to follow out of bounds, so yeah. Louis doesn't issue. know how to follow in bounds. He just gets lost out Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So. Louis is going to be the first AI in an RE game that will lose your time because he stops to fix his hair. <laughs> yeah. This part's basically no different on pro than it is on any other difficulty. It's the same because everyone still dies in one shot. Yeah. yeah. Like, I guess your card takes. Card takes. Yeah, your card takes a little bit more damage. But in general, you should not take any damage here. <clears throat> it's actually the. the worst part about it is that it's actually so easy that sometimes you just kind of get a little lazy where like you'll you'll think like okay like you're kind of in an auto scroller but if you don't <laughs> tip your cart when you need to or you yeah. don't pay attention you'll just die because you're running to a wall or something like that yeah. so in this like cart section you do have to like control the cart from tipping over so every time you're like turning left uh you gotta lean right and all that so just to kind of balance it out they don't like to tip over This part's very straightforward, so it'll break part. I'm just gonna run past this enemy and then hope Luis also runs past the enemy. Yeah. Luis can sometimes just stop to fix the hair here and. Arm stops to fix hair, sometimes she'll stop and take 10 Hail Marys. We'll see which one we get here. Do we get either of them? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, Look at that pose. Oh, that's <laughs> pose. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> awesome. <laughs> he needed to take a deep breath. It was, it was a lot of running. The, the 10 Let's seconds go. of running up those stairs very, very <laughs> winded, this guy. And yeah, the second part of the... right here. Not too much from the different from the first, except we... get a one a bit stronger enemy here, but we have a easy way to deal with him. You can see it soon. We have a chainsaw. Let's open the door here. Yeah, so his cart, like, on, on Pro, he's actually pretty tanky if you just, like, shoot him, but his cart breaks. Maybe the same as the other difficulties, because it breaks really fast. Yeah, you can just deal with the cart. get a unique line of dialogue from Leon as well. I can't really show it here oh. also, but if uh, if you guys haven't seen what it looks like when you actually let the cart flip, I recommend like going and trying it or looking up a video. It's actually hilarious. Le Leon and Luis, I actually like, still haven't done it. Out of it. It's insane. I actually still haven't done it. I need to do that at some point. It's kind and of that's insane. Alive. You hit that explosive on the first shot out there. <laughs> yeah, that explosive outside actually, we like thought it didn't do anything for a little while, but it actually damages the chainsaw guy's cart. Yeah, so it makes it break like super fast here. And it's actually kind of funny how more chill this section all of a sudden becomes without the chainsaw, dude. Like, this is barely anything happening here. Yeah, it's yeah. basically over now. So, you normally you'd be here, yeah, normally here, the chainsaw dude would be like attacking you and all that, but we're just chilling here. Having good old time, Lewis. Yeah, this, this, this section gives you, this section baits you, don't listen to it. It gives you the red nine, and then it's surprisingly super accurate on everything. 
the red nine is not at all accurate on anything. So, like, this is Luis's super special red nine or something, but if you buy a red nine or use the red nine in this game, it is awful. I would not recommend it. Uh, but this section makes it look really good, but it is not that good. You can see where they dug up the bugs. This is where they oh. dug up the bugs, guys. Yeah, <laughs> this is where they dug up the bugs. I don't trust and more novice. While this, yeah. while this section um, has novice again, it's a lot more chill, but the only bad thing about this section is that Lewis can just sometimes decide to stop and fight all the novice mm -hmm. and delay any of the chapter like up to 30 seconds or something. He's just, he just really likes, likes fighting the box. So. He's gotta be a hero. I've noticed if I like take a certain line here to try to aggro uh, less of the newbies, he doesn't get stuck as much, but and I try to make sure I kill any of the ones before I go in the cave up here if they're like How about you open on him behind me. Hey, I'm the oh. I knew it. But you also can't like sit around and just kill every novice because you're losing the same amount of time yeah. anyways. Yeah, he's standing there in a MMA style fighting off like four of them for some reason. <laughs> he just does that. He's here. Oh, huh? fixed treasure. Oh, nice. There's another nice. fixed treasure we pick up to make sure we have the money for what we need later in the game. So we're going to do another merge and stop here before we get to the next boss fight. Or I guess pseudo boss fight. First encounter with the... Uh, with the uh, future boss, I guess. Major K. got something new for you. So he's gonna sell a bunch of stuff here and he's gonna he's gonna juice up his knife uh, and make it as strong as he possibly can because for some for some reason with the knife um, when you max out it's it, like you put money into it and you sell it back later I believe you can actually sell back at a profit um, and I think it only impacts the knife because it's a weapon that you started with and I believe it also might apply to the pistol as well um, but we need the knife to be as strong as we can for the boss to come up which is gonna be Krauser. Uh, which is one of, uh, you know, this is like a first encounter with Krauser, actually. Um, unfortunately, our good friend Luis here uh, will perish in just a second uh, before we start this fight. Um, but the whole gimmick of this fight, this fight is going to try to do, is essentially uh, keep Krauser stun locked as much as he can. So he's going to kind of time stab sometimes after Krauser staggers that little, like, shimmy he does there and then do a kick. Um, there's a thing about this fight where your kick can crit, essentially, and it'll do insane damage. Uh, like, it'll delete most of Krauser's health bar if you get it, so it's really nice to get it, um, but you're kind of praying. Uh, also, there's a lot of parrying in this fight, a lot of perfect parrying, which is very satisfying to do. Uh, as you saw Spikes, you just hit a bunch of them. Uh, but the fight's basically just this rotation of, of stabbing Krauser and triggering a kick prompt. Um, it's a pretty straightforward fight, but you, you really want a good one like that. That was pretty good. Did you get a juicy yeah, kick there? I don't even think I did. I just hit him a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That double jump over he uh -huh. did was weird. I've never seen him jump twice in a row like that without doing anything. You won't get away with yeah, I think that like the crit kicks just like completely delete this fight. It's so funny. Like sometimes you just get so lucky that the fight like starts and like you do two kicks and he just disappears. Yeah. I have a lot of heals now. Dark ammo could be better. This. Are we gonna do the throw room? Uh, he could do a save and run to the throw room and load it back. Yeah, yeah, that's wanna, it. That's a good idea. Yeah. I could do that. There's some spare yeah. eggs in the throne room too. So. Yeah. We'll just make a save go and go do it, and then I'll load the save back. Yeah. We can not show the throne room here. Just. But it's quite out of the way, so normally, obviously, we would not do this, but just to showcase the classic. Let me get my merchant here first. Ah, so here, the reason that we stole the Broken Butterfly, um, that we're going to rebuy it is because it refills the ammo. Anytime. 
Yeah, you cannot do that thing in this game where you upgrade the ammo capacity of a weapon and it automatically fills its ammo. Unfortunately, that was the very first thing I think every single speedrunner tried, and even casual player tried, and it did not work, and we were all sad. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of... <laughs> this is like detour. Little detour. Are there actually no novice here the first time through, like this? No, no. no. It would be on the way back if you actually... You just I, mean, get I guess I if you like wanted to try enemies. the run, if you wanted to try the run back, you could do the double leg. Mm. Ooh, that. Oh, oh I, I don't have the cube. You, you don't have the cube. Yeah, uh, you don't have the cube. That would have been a good right, idea, right, right. It's a slight detour. This, this guy's following me in here. Zooming. Uh, he'll, he'll probably leave. Detour's absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary. Oh. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Quest completed. This chair hey. looks sick. Uh, that's the drip. That's no time for resting. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Alright, that was necessary. Can we go back? Yeah. This is our detour. The nice throne room in this game. It looks really sick. It's a great a great little homage they paid to the original game. Yeah. Unfortunately it's not in the route of the speed run, but Yeah, they put yeah. it way out of the way in this game. But now we have the clock tower. Yeah, this is um, this is a section where depending of kind of like how much resources you have, you might do this in a few different ways. Sometimes it's shotgunning and flashing and all that, but uh, yeah, at least leading up to then the, the elevator. Uh, let's see how spicy does this. Yeah, this, this whole section is kind of scary because there's a lot of enemies spawning and coming down this area. Uh, you can blow up this statue uh, so that you don't have to deal with the flamethrower that spins around. Um, but these these like, these like stairs up are kind of crowded and they can be kind of hard for the type of enemies that are up there too. So basically the idea is we just got to get to the top so we can get to the elevator. Um, and the biggest issue with it is that uh, there's also a dude at the top who's going to send these big like balls down. Um, that will essentially like one shot you if you get hit by it. Uh, but we're gonna let this first one uh, start to come down, and we're gonna sniper clip into the wall here to avoid it, so it doesn't hit Leon. Uh, and we're gonna run up to the top and end this whole sequence. I'm gonna wait here. The... I don't know if that push is gonna make oh, me yeah. die. Yeah, the... I think I had enough time still. Me, but... Yeah. The pushing is also a very not fun mechanic to deal with in this game. Especially you can grab a few treasures here before he starts the uh, the elevator sequence. The TMP purchase that he did at Verdugo is going to pay off here uh, because you can use gravity to essentially. Uh, this homie is a long What's going on, man? <laughs> uh, the whole gimmick of this elevator is just like it is in the original. If enemies get on the elevator, it will stop. Um, the TMP is useful here because enemies will try to jump from high up to get on it. Uh, and we don't really have very much shock and ammo here, and we kind of want to save it for the uh, area coming up after this. Um, so the TMP makes it so that if an enemy jumps in the air to get on, you can just boss them a few times and they'll just fall into their death. Um, which makes this way, way more bearable. Um, the only thing you really have to look out for is like when they group up here and when archers show up. Because archers will hurt a lot, but the bulletproof vest also helps a lot with that. This actually has a lot of sniper ammo here, so you can just take and close and snipe everything down here. Yeah, you have a lot of sniper ammo, my goodness. Yeah. I think the Vertigo room gave you like just like the same amount of rifle ammo if I remember correctly. It's no heavy nades. Surely I'll get one heavy nade before the uh thing. Yeah, I mean RRG's been so kind to you so far, right? Like I'm throw you a bone. Very nice. 
Where'd that guy come from? All the way from the bar. I TMP the shield guy. I think it was Richard. Uh, I tried. Shield, I've remember. never had luck with the shield dude. TMP being him, so. What a lovely sound that guy is making. Yeah. Having a party. You're hey. everybody all. My ears love that party <laughs> actually a lot. My tinnitus loves it so much. It's so much rifle ammo. What happened? Yeah, I think there's literally a box, like four rifle box drop at the where they go. It's like you're saying. And in here, if you sprint, uh, this will break, so you can just slowly walk by here. There's a way you can do like a kind of like tap sprint across. It'll just save some time, yeah. but not gonna risk it right now. Yeah. So not very really marathon friendly because you messed up. You go all the way back to the start of the elevator ride. You don't really want to do that. So, uh, but now we're coming up on the the fight that made us made routing so hard for so long and we routed around this guy for so long uh and then things changed yeah uh and you'll see what changed here in a second we are already golden egg we picked up the very beginning of the run the golden egg has this interaction with salazar uh based on a quest in the game uh so you saw Spicy throw an egg at a painting earlier. That's actually a quest, and you can turn it in to get uh, some spindles from uh, for from the merchant. What that also basically means, for some reason, if you throw the golden egg at Salazar, it does uh, what is it twenty three thousand damage to him? It's Something a, it's along a, those like lines. Like seventy percent of his health completely gone with one golden egg. Yeah, so. it's 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 it, it was crazy uh, when that was discovered. Because at the time, we were routing in a rocket launcher for this guy because we were so overdue. Because the fight's actually incredibly hard to do fast, organically. Because he runs around, he has a stupid scripted phases that we don't like to deal with. Very much a pain. So we routed in money to get a rocket launcher for him until the golden egg thing was discovered. Um, and then now we use the golden egg plus the broken butterfly. Kills him 10 seconds. Fight ends super fast. Probably the greatest thing to have been found in this run and I'm not even kidding, in terms of like making our lives easier routing this, was that we could use the golden egg on him. Yeah, we can just cut on so much treasure because we just used the routing rocket launcher here and obviously rocket launchers are 160,000, so just... Yeah, it was actually, it was a similar thing with Mendez. We were also routing out a bunch of treasure for Mendez. Um, and we were actually killing with the TMP early on before the Mendez skip was found. And then I think it was like Mendez skip and the egg thing was found like in the same day pretty much and the route just instantly got so much better yeah, a lot less loading and more just going Perfect. constantly yeah. the pace is really good in this run constantly just things to do yeah that's the end of the castle we're heading for the uh, island the last bit of the run we have a cool little skip here at the start of island um, with these laser turrets that we're coming up to. You can see the lasers over there. Oh, there's a sniper rifle underneath your feet. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Just ignore the floating sniper. As yeah, so you can see one here, basically these turrets have an insta-kill mechanic. Uh, if you walk in them, you die. Even if you have invincibility turned on, like when you're doing practice, you will still die. They're just like set to kill you. Um, but they don't actually only target you, they target anything that goes in the in the lasers, and we use that in two different spots. We'll use it once towards the end of the game as well. Yeah. So the idea here is to uh, grenade this one archer here that will knock the enemy into the turret. Do I still make this? Can you make this? Ooh. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. 
It's okay. But Aria is the trick. <laughs> trick the turret to shoot the enemy, and that will make the turret have a little bit of a cooldown. Um, so you can run through it. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, you definitely got. You definitely got goal kept on that one. That was a little crazy. Yeah. Sparta kicked back to the checkpoint. Yeah. The JJ that spawns there, I guess he's technically called a brew, but we call him JJ because it's like JJ from the original game. Uh, it's kind of who he replaced. It, it's it's a pain. We used to have a different strat where we would actually just bait him into kicking his way into the turret, which does work, but it is ultimately slower. Uh, but with this grenade strat, it's actually incredibly consistent. Uh, the only problem is, is that dude that hit Spicy is not... Uh, at the beginning, that dude with the electrical weapon. He kind of is in an RNG spot when you go through here. Sometimes you have to shoot him to deal with him, sometimes you don't. Uh, like where he is right now, Spicy's gonna have to shoot him so he doesn't do that again. Um, which, this should make this a little bit easier now that he's out of the way. And what Spicy's trying to do is blow up that thing on JJ's arm so that he doesn't kick him. Uh, so that that's exactly how it's supposed to go. But you know, that if you would way. do this section normally, you would have to turn... How many turrets is this? I guess you have to turn two turrets, and then you have to run a really long like loop around to actually get through the stairs. Like This saves actually like so much time just being able to skip directly through without having to interact with any of the turrets in that section. Yeah, that turret skip is, is very important. There's another one later as well that is significantly worse. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, we'll see if Spicy goes to that when he gets there, because it is a very risky strat. Um, but the turret skips play a very big role in making Island easier, but also a lot harder in the same way, because it just makes it faster. But you have to do some risky scuff stuff, because the turrets one-shot you, so... Uh, we'll see when we get to that. But Island, for the most part, uh, has some weird pacing to it. Uh, we're now, uh, that we finished, like, this entry, which is, like, really aggressive and very fast. Now we're moving into the basically like the lab area um, of of island where we get to start meeting uh, a new enemy type and uh, dealing with a few other type of situations that involve some tricky uh, clipping. I've never seen Magnum Ammo drop in that locker in my life. <laughs> Usually, like this part of the island is pretty chill and kind of conscious. And once you get here, you have a little bit of like just safe running through the area. Yeah, this part's not too bad as long as you have shock and ammo. I've ended up here with like no shock and ammo sometimes, and it's, and it's not very chill. We're still like running around with an upgraded shotgun here, but it's just like it does its job. We just use it to knock enemies out of the way, and we like, can like still kill enemies even with zero upgrades at this point. So it's insanely strong. Safety fish, because Leon eats anything and everything. Gotta do a little Welcome safety armor repair here. Guess we get uh, blown up, surely. Yeah, surely that doesn't happen. Never. <laughs> uh. And here we're introduced to the uh. The lovely new enemies. Um, this guy is so cool in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a bit more. To me, like they just did this introduction, this area just so well. Again, so these spooky. things are. Uh, this is like. Power puddles are also the same every time. Hello. The regenerators, they're actually really fast in this one. Like, really fast. They like sprint and with their like off their feet, they like 
scream like crazy on the floor as they're well, like, kind of. They're like faster on the floor than they are. But yeah. They're standing up. Um, these yeah. dudes, as their name says, they're regenerators. They regen their limbs back and all that. Um, there's a way to kill them, and we're actually gonna see the kind of intended way of killing them a bit later in the run. But uh, for now, we just run past all of them because you kind of don't have the ideal way of dealing with them at this point, anyway. Yeah, the way we can in this room, you're kind of expected to run away from this guy for a while, but using the sniper clipping we used earlier to bypass doors and whatnot. Um, you can actually use this to put yourself just into walls. And when Leon is clipped like into walls, the AI doesn't know what to do. So they just kind of sit there so and they're just kind of waiting for you to come out and play. Mm -hmm. But you're not really going to do that. You're yeah. going to chill here as we wait for this uh, key card thing to finish processing. Um, you just kind of wait and uh, the AI will sit there and do nothing until you come out of it. Uh, so Spice is going to grab that and run. That was insane. He just yeah. 180. Did you see the 180 on him? That was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, crazy. He's built a little different. Yeah, that is rare, but can happen. Uh, but the idea yeah. is you just run around him and you get out. But still, that's better than the alternative of running around and praying you don't die. Yeah, the regenerators have like different, like few different attacks, and just some of them can like insta grab you when you try to run through there. So that's really unlucky. But generally, is able to just run through. You just shocking him, Really bad. A little bit of a stealth strat to uh, save some ammunition, otherwise we'd have to deal with three dudes. And uh, since we don't have really upgraded weapons, or like not that upgraded weapons, it's just better to just stealth kill a couple of these. Yeah, at just this point in the these... game, these enemies have really high HP. They scaled really hard beyond what they were like what you had at like village and stuff. So things are really hard to kill. Here we get the different scope, the biosensor scope for the rifle, and this is the intended way of dealing with the regenerators. You can see these parasites uh, inside that you have to destroy to stop him from regenerating. And one of these regenerators have a wrench inside them. Must have been very hungry. <laughs> and yeah, we need the wrench to open up this last keycard reader. Because you totally can't fit your finger through to flip the switch, right? Yeah, I don't know about that. That's so weird. Yeah. Um, or like, just use the knife to like flip the switch or something, but... You know. um, again, we have to wait for the keycard to get ready here. And we're just clipping into the wall, just waiting for the keycard to be ready and bugging out the AI here at the same time. Yeah, so on this one, these enemies can uh, be a little funny and just kind of push me around and push me into a spot where I can be hit. Yeah. Like and they're kind of like, trying so to for do some right reason, now. the thrower enemies also just don't actually react to this clipping stuff at all. They still try to throw things at you. So there's like a dynamite dude outside who likes throwing things. So we just need to kind of clip inside the wall at a certain spot. So the dynamite uh, <laughs> thrower oh, doesn't. God make life difficult for you. Yeah, because you can just get blown up the second you like are clipped out and they push you out, like the dynamite will one-shot you. Granted, if you have the vest on, it'll at least absorb one blast. Yeah. Um, but anything more than that, you don't really want to happen. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty good chapter. Uh, chapter 13 there, 14? Not too bad, yeah. other than the death to the turret. But... Yeah. Now we're... Uh, Back with Ashley, and we're coming up on one of the greatest door clips. Uh, like, the first door clip, I think, that was, like, used um, when it was found. Uh, so there's this one, which isn't the one I'm really referring to. This one, uh, you can just kind of skip uh, having to, like, lug Ashley over. But this one coming up here, there's a long-timed section um, that you can make faster with heavy grenades or an RPG if you have them. But in Pro, we wouldn't really have that luxury. This door is locked, and you couldn't do it until you finish this, this wrecking ball section that takes a long time. We can just door clip through it now, and skips basically the entire chapter uh, all the way up to the boss fight at the end of the chapter, which is right after this. Uh, so this is very nice, because now we don't have to waste any resources there, and we get to loot these boxes for free, 
and it's it's very very convenient that we can do that because otherwise doing this organically kind of isn't amazing yeah they're like a wrong section where you have to protect that Ashley from enemies as well and you have to do like a puzzle there's regenerators and there's the enemies and then you have the breaking ball section itself and yeah it just saves a lot of resources as well just being able to skip through everything obviously it's just very fast so you know i i was thinking we work well together don't we i guess so right maybe someday I'll cozy ride we could protect the U.S. from any and all threats. Is that right? Well, either way, first... Capcom did actually in include, like, uh, in the Wrecking Ball no, section, you can actually, like, explode the wall, make it weaker, so just a one Wrecking Ball hit will break it. Just another one of those cool things Capcom added. This game, this is kind of more flair and ways to skip sequences if you want. Yeah, there's a lot of those, which is really cool. There's another one coming up soon as well with the heavy nids. Yeah. Capcom really made it so that when you play through this on New Game Plus, you could actually skip a lot of stuff if you grab, like, the infinite grenade uh, rocket launcher and everything. Make your life easier. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of shop stop here to uh, adjust for the next upcoming fight here. Meeting up with Crosser again, but this is now the full on fight. It has a couple like phases. The early stages are just more quite quick, but then there's the final fight at the end here. So we buy up the Killer 7 here. Gonna be our main weapon in all the fights here. And kind of the reason we early on also buy the Magnum, because it like, makes it more likely the game to drop Magnum ammo that we can have a decent amount of here at this point in the run. Which Spicy so. does. He had 10 in the bank, which is the most I've seen, I think. Yeah. Today. It's kind of insane. So Spicy gives you two shots to Krauser and then one sniper shot to end this first phase. Um, you can get lucky and the uh, Killer 7 can crit, which will end it in two shots. Um, but that first base is pretty scripted for the most part. Uh, there's no real randomness to it. You can basically always do that strat as long as you don't miss. Um, but now we're kind of in this uh, section where we kind of chase Krauser down, um, which revolves uh, dodging some traps and getting close to him to prepare for the second phase of the fight. Um, but there's some tricks and a few things you have to do to like get there, avoid dying and taking too much damage and also speeding it up. Uh, like coming up here in a second, there's a scripted ambush Krauser's gonna do to Spicy. Um, but we're gonna avoid it by dipping into this little alcove, shooting the explosive and just running through. Krauser's gonna spawn back there and he's gonna miss. Uh, Spicy's gonna pop that trap and shoot Krauser in the head to like trigger this section to end instantly so Krauser doesn't stop there and shoot. Uh, take out a few traps and the turrets. Uh, before we come up on uh, the this little uh, arena where we have to avoid a couple shots from Krauser and get to him as fast as possible. Uh, so a lot of this is just running through, dodging stuff, and um, going to this uh, save point here. Because it's, it's conveniently placed here on Professional, because this fight can take a long time casually. Uh, so making a save here is really smart in a marathon sense, because it's pretty risky of a fight. I'm going to do a couple of very precise dodges. If you like mistime even tiny bit, then this whole thing goes out of cycle and you're going to get like... Oh yeah, that's that's not good. That's stagger. So I have to just take it safe here now. Actually, I'm pretty sure if I run there I get hit too. Yeah, yeah, it's... it's... fortunate. Yeah, and now Spicy comes up on the second phase of Krauser. Uh, what he's planning to do is position near this explosive to his... Uh, uh, I am doing explosive, just a different positioning. Okay. So he's shooting him a, a few times with the sniper, and then he's going to bring him near this explosive uh, to damage it and use iframe so that he doesn't get hit by it. He didn't take damage from it. Just needs a max shot. I'm not falling for your mind games. I need, I need him to do anything where I can shoot him. Yeah. Nope. This, He's this doing face. the combo like. Oh yeah. my dude, just do something. <laughs> Please. I need him to either flash and jump behind me or get staggered from a parry. Really oh, it's not too late. Oh, 
probably worth the Magnum ammo here, worst case scenario, but... I guess that means we'll never see eye to eye. What are you Not doing? very cooperative. Yeah, so I don't... I still haven't figured out why, but sometimes... Um, the explosive in that strat just won't do any damage for some reason, and I, I have no idea why. But I'm not sure, but I think if you uh, like wait a tiny bit longer before dodging or doing the QT prompt, I think it actually might make it more consistently do the damage. I'm not sure though. Again, Maybe. it's it's hard to tell. Like doesn't sometimes do damage, but yeah, it's my working well, theory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we're coming to the third phase. Where Krauser is mutated. Uh, Spicy's gonna uh, essentially dodge his first attack uh, and then line up some Magnum shots on him. And we're essentially trying to uh, keep Krauser down here if we can, based on what he chooses to do here. This grab is actually good. Uh, it'll allow Spicy to shoot him a few more times and keep him here. Oh, never mind, he jumped up. Yeah, if I would have dodged the grab, I would have been fine, but I was too close to him to strafe it, I think. The way you're going, there won't be anything left to protect. You'd have known that once. Pretty good. Still not that bad though. Yeah. yeah. Climbing up the ladder there forces uh, him to jump up and it gives you a free shot. At least two free shots actually. But juicing up the pumping up the killer seven there really makes that fight a bit more trivial than it normally would be. It makes it pretty fast. Yeah. The, again, with crits, this fight can be even more like ridiculously fast or you can first of all you can crit the crit the kicks and then if your magnum crits at all it just can like wipe this boss like super quickly as well but again just luck based i think i saw a clip of bot killing him in four shots I've got some new yeah just, yeah it's just all crits yeah yeah scene. i would imagine like the kick crit up to uh just stocking up while so, Making sure yeah, I'm we're, uh, this last area. Yeah, there's this next area is where things kind of get a little, little spooky. Uh, it's a fast area, but a lot of stuff happens very quickly, and it, it involves uh, needing flashbangs, heavy grenades, and a fully repaired armor kit to really get through it safely. Um, this is where we're introduced to a really cool and long-lived character, Mike the helicopter guy. Uh, Mike is gonna show up here and help kill a bunch of Ganados while we uh, get in position up here near this turret. Uh, the idea here is you need to kill, I think it's about 17 enemies uh, before the area will end and you can proceed to the next area. So we got these guys up here, Mike's gonna help kill. And you need to stay in line of sight of Mike or else we'll trigger a cutscene that loses time. So Spicy's gonna chill here until Mike uh, says, sorry, bad Hello? traffic. Oh, there's somebody alive still here. Uh. <laughs> nice, What's the game is Mike? falling. There's somebody alive somewhere. Yeah, there he yeah. is. Interesting. Mike is a bit inconsistent sometimes killing some of these dudes, so... <laughs> Spicy's gonna throw a heavy nade here to basically kill a wave as it spawns. And he's gonna turn towards this turret and use it to kill the other side. Uh, usually when you do this, you hit the kill counter pretty fast and you can get in position and wait for Mike to blow up the, de the debris wall. And before you can move into the next area, uh, which is the war room, uh, and that's uh, exciting. Uh, the war room in the remake is uh, very, very uh, spooky and uh, just as inconsistent as you could imagine it could be because there's a lot of uh, shooting going on and a lot of enemies and just people everywhere. Instead of letting Mike help us here, we just run through instead and we'll I'll have the tur Mike blow up this tower when we're next to it. Very helpful. There's a uh, an anti-air turret here that you would have to climb the tower to your left to destroy with a turret, um, which is a nightmare to get up and down on. But instead, if you use a heavy grenade and a normal grenade, the turret can just be destroyed like that. It can be destroyed with an RPG as well. Uh, to skip having to, to scale this tower that is actually huge because scaling that tower and getting back down is nearly impossible to do safely uh there's a lot of enemies and it's very very difficult so we're doing another sniper clip here to avoid enemy aggro and now we're in the war room where essentially spice has to get up on both sides and hit a uh 
a lever on both sides to open up a door similar to the OG game. The problem is, is after you hit one lever, the room starts to fill with enemies even more aggressively on the other side. So Spicy's gonna hit this lever, and uh, we're just gonna start letting flashes rip. Uh, the whole idea of this is to just flash anything that is gonna prevent you from doing what you need to do, because the enemies stack up here so badly. There's also an RPG guy up behind you. Uh, it's what that little red laser as you see flying around is that is a guy with an RPG just looking around uh, Makes life so hard, but you see all the enemies that stack up here. This is why we're flashing everything This whole area is just such a cluster. It's, it's impossible to like, you know, be safe without using at least three flashes yeah. That was that was really clean very clean and, uh, here we're gonna be doing something interesting that will not make a lot of sense at this point, but uh, we'll be flipping inside the wall and making a save, and, uh, loading up this, and uh, we'll s figure out hopefully later why. Hopefully, uh, I really want. Hopefully. hopefully, I really want both yeah, to I'm... work, but yeah. So we're gonna do a little bit of drop in here, and we're then we just gonna carry on with the rest of the level. And uh, hopefully we don't die before the end of the level, because this will re lead into a, a hilarious glitch. Um. Get so now just everybody pray for uh, Spicy to uh, not die here, because there's an incoming kind of a random sketchy skip. Uh, are, are you doing it the safe way? I'm gonna, like the, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna send it. I respect it. Uh, Spicy's coming up on uh, this next area of the game, uh, which is probably one of the most volatile skips that we really do in terms of like uh, success rate and what it, it means to fail it. Uh, but Spicy's doing these little door clips here, which are basically just like clipping into the door and pressing W so that you come out on the other side uh, because of the animation pull. Uh, he's also going to do it um, on this door as well. And then we're entering that room we just talked about. Uh, obviously, Spicy is going to make a save here because it is uh, wise to do so. Because uh, we're coming up on the second turret skip of the run, which is also the last turret skip. This turret skip relies on an enemy AI to essentially charge into it and let you get through. And the enemy AI we're relying on is none other than the Novistadors uh, that have treated us so well this run. Um, so Spicy's going to kill this RPG guy so he's not a threat, and we're going to get up here and line up close to this turret laser, but not too close to where we get shot, and we are hoping that a Novi behind him, a Novisador, will charge him and will run itself into the turret like that and let Spicy get through it. Easy. First try. Consistent. Uh, it's... <laughs> and now... <laughs> Um, hopefully that works. Yeah, hopefully it works. Um, the the save and the dropping down into the void earlier is all because of this. Okay, Hope, assuming this works. It sometimes for some reason it doesn't work, but yeah, there, there, we, go. Uh, there we go. This is the, the uh, duffel bag Ashley skip, where essentially the game bugs out and lets you carry Ashley like a screaming toddler in Walmart. <laughs> Why? We don't know. We don't know. We don't also, understand. this doesn't work half the time, and we also don't know why. It actually works all the time for only <laughs> spicy, which is kind of messed up if you really think yeah. about it. Um, I think that I guess somehow like falling out of bounds just glitches Leon's animation <laughs> thing at the end here somehow. It, it, we don't know. It, it makes no sense, but uh, oh, obviously we die before. Oh, that but... was clean, actually. Nice. There's there's some. Pausing, so basically what this duffel bag glitch does is it allows you to do walking speed while carrying Ashley here, which otherwise, which is like three times faster than the normal speed that it would put you at. See this little hobble he's doing there? That's the speed you would be at basically the whole time, but this speeds it up by like 40 seconds. And those little pauses Spicy was doing, that's actually recently discovered that you can pause to skip two animations that would otherwise stop you. Uh, some weird pause buffering that just skips it entirely, uh, which is why you didn't see Spicy fall to the ground. You also didn't see him get stuck on the wall. So, uh... That actually, that chapter actually went perfectly. Uh, yeah, yeah, that never happened. What happened to the gun? Way. Yeah, it's. So I'm using a mod that gives me like Wesker suit, but I guess it's bugged sometimes, and the weapons will just like float under me, but I don't have them equipped. I don't know. 
Yeah, that loaded sniper on the floor sometimes. You're getting good at that. But yeah, we're uh, heading up to the, this the last chapter, and uh, you sure you're okay? oh, it's we're pretty there. much dealing with the uh, boss almost the same way as in the original, good. except there's like few phases in this one. But Look at this yeah, place. the the resources the game has given you this run has been kind of insane, I will say, magnum wise. Magnum wise, oh, and yeah, like She's large resources and stuff. It's very, very nice. Um, but yeah, this last section of the game, this is chapter 16. This is the final chapter of the game, uh, which is relatively short. This is the shortest chapter of the game, um, where essentially it's just a boss fight and then the the escape that we have to do. But the way we do this boss fight, very similar to the original, uh, where we kind of sell out and grab an RPG for Saddler here. Um, so what you're going to see is you're going to see Spicy grab this gold bar. He's going to sell out his inventory. Uh, including his Killer 7, and buy back the Killer 7 and an RPG. Uh, the reason for this, uh, and why he's buying back the Killer 7, if you know the RPG would one-shot, is because in this game, there is uh, the second phase of Saddler uh, is essentially like this little ball weak, weak point phase, which you can just wait and time out. It's about 40 seconds, I believe, um, or 25 or 30 or something like those lines. Um, but this RPG will basically skip the first phase. Like, it's, it's done. He's dead. Um, it takes about 12 magnum shots to end the second phase without waiting to time it out. So that's why Spicy crafted and he sold his Killer 7 and bought it back because it refilled the ammo. We don't need to upgrade it because the, the stock damage on it will be enough. So he's going to wait till this tentacle goes away and now he's taking full damage. So he'll start pumping into him. Uh, a crit will make it faster, but obviously we don't really need that. And essentially you'll know it's done when Ada shows up and gives Leon the super rocket launcher, which is that one right there. Grab that bad boy and that's the Sadler fight. Now for the jet ski. Surely I can skip the jet ski typewriter. But yeah, yeah, surely you can do this without do saving. There's no way. Oh, he's, he's, I will he's never let you being bald, being bald. <laughs> I will never let don't you live crash the jet ski. Don't crash the jet ski. The jet ski in this one is, is actually significantly more harder than the original one. Yeah. It's it's like it's still like you can still do it like fine once you like understand it, but like one little mess up going full speed and you just die. Yeah, the jet ski takes some pro like insane damage. Like depending on how you crash, you could like hit one thing and just insta die. Um, or sometimes it's like two hits as well. So. Uh, very bold. Very bold. It uh, took me about three playthroughs until I got my achievement, which made it, which said that I finished the jet ski without taking damage. <laughs> I was very proud of myself. I remember I saw that on Steam and I posted a screenshot like, grats, dude, finally. I know this is big for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was hard. It was hard. I died here like six times on my pro playthrough. <laughs> Alright. Uh, now just safe riding. Significantly harder compared to the original. Uh, this ride, so I have totally not died here before and lost like five minutes because I went back to the beginning of the chapter because I did not <laughs> save. Definitely has not happened before. Always oh, save. Ooh, nice flip. We do all the flips. I didn't realize you get money for that. Yeah, you get like a thousand pesetas per flip. Is it vital for the money routing? Yes. <laughs> it's special for the new game pass run, okay? Every thousand counts. Looks pretty nice. There's a lot of like these random little debris here, which actually also damage your boat. So did they actually damage it or just bump it? I'm actually not sure. The slightly bigger uh, ones I, damage I, it. Yeah, I think there's like med metallic like things that will damage you, your boat. But time will be coming up here shortly after he exits the gate. Yeah. Last jump, he jump here. And. Time. Uh, GG. 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 That was uh, certainly a run. That's for sure. I had like, there's so many parts in there that stuff happened that I have actually just never seen before. So the usual yes. RE4 experience. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's a perfect example of what it's like to run RE4 professional new game. 
Um, right there. I guess I'll shout it out. On the 15th, Waifu is hosting a tournament for this category. Um, currently, it's like open qualifiers, top eight times by the 15th. They're by the by the 14th. Uh, we'll be in on the 15th, so um, you guys should stop by and watch that if you enjoyed this run. It'll be like a live eight-hour long event uh, where we do a bunch of runs. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, also, if you want to check me out, twitch.tv slash spicy. No TV in the name anymore. And uh, Don't mention it. Yeah, that's about it for me. Uh, Zeke you know, and Trey, if you want to shout stuff out, I could put in free. a word with my dad. Have you assigned to my detail? Uh, I don't know. Just GG's. Good run. You don't need Shout out to the dudes who helped us route this so I far. You could Been a lot yourself. of work going into this, and yeah. Good job. Even if you could use a lesson yep, in nice. GG's. <laughs> I really have nothing to add. Just hold on. Hold on. Let's go home. GG's. What was the IGT? I got enough. Yeah. Really, really bad. Most likely. Let's see what we have. We have... Sub oh, two. Oh, How is that sub 210? I, that was so bad. It was the That's throne room. That's why. Oh, yeah. The throne <laughs> yeah. Room. It, uh, it really did. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One minute detour. I do want to say uh, thank you all again. Uh, this was absolutely uh, a ridiculous run of RE4 Remake. I'm sure a lot of people are surprised it is uh, so broken so quickly. Uh, before we hop on off for the night, uh, does anyone else have anything they'd like to add on in or just anything they'd like to say? I think I'm all good. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're good. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, as well, before we do go, uh, if you did enjoy anything in this run, make sure you do check out Spicy, who's uh, kind of been dominating the uh, the RE4 game as of lately for RE4 make. Uh, I'm pretty sure the links are posted in chat. You can find them there. And absolutely. Congrats once again on now just being spicy. Yeah, sleep. All right. Anyway, we are now done for the night. That was RE4 Classic Pro, RE4 Remake Pro. It's nice kind of seeing how quickly the game developed and how the game has developed over the years, um, I guess, as a whole for RE4. Uh, we will be back in two weeks on Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, this is the GDU Horror Show. Uh, I've been your host, Dicis. I plan all these out. So if you're ever curious on how that goes, I don't know. Check me out somewhere. My name's around here. I uh, have a lot of fun stuff, so hopefully you'll be here next time. Anyway, hope you have a good rest of the day or night, and take it easy, and have a good one, everyone.